So it turns out Kevin Harvick is not having a bad season like most of you guys thought. So let's talk about it on this edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Green flag, green flag. I'll roll, I'll roll. In today's edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, we are happy to be joined by the one and only Jagger Jones. How's it going, man? Going pretty well. How about you guys? Uh, we're good. We're good, man. Uh, definitely one of the rising stars in the K and N series, and also a pretty cool nick or um, uh, a pretty cool uh, name too. <laughs> yeah, Jagger, Jagger Jones, <laughs> man. Yeah, definitely a racing name for sure. Uh, all right, so let's get right. So uh, let's get right into it here. Um, so uh, I, um, I guess the first question is just uh, talk about your K and N West season up to this point. Yeah. So a, for a rookie season, I'd say it's pretty good. Of course, I would like to have a win by this time in my ideal world world of course i mean i would like to have won every single race this year if it was up to me but um no but i think we've had a great season um it's definitely been a learning process i think we've gotten better at least made improvements every single week so that's been pretty pretty cool um and it's been cool to be fighting for wins uh like i said we haven't got that first win yet but we've been pretty close so, you know, you were saying you haven't got that first win. You have two second-place finishes so far this year. I guess, what do you think you guys might have to do just to get over the hump and get that first win of the year? Um, I mean, so, like you said, I have two second places. The Vegas one, I kind of threw that one way a little bit. We had just had a silly mistakes with the radio and all that. So that would have been a pretty cool first win in my debut race. Um, and then Colorado. But we had a really good run going. Probably we're going to end up set first or second. And then we got in a little bit of a tangle on the last lap. And then Roseburg, we, we finished second again, tying my best finish. Um, we just need a little bit more speed. And I think that's that's really what it comes down to. The um, A lot of a couple cars, 16, 19, have had a little bit more speed than us at most tracks. Uh, so we just got to just work in practice with our cars. Uh, me with my crew chief, me just getting a better feel for what I need in the car. I think if we can do that, um, just get a little bit more on the speed charts, then I think uh, we'll be able to dominate some of these races. Yeah, so you kind of alluded to it there, but w besides just speed, are there any tracks coming up You know, the rest of the season that you think you look at kind of circled as a way you can catch up to the 16 and the 19? Because you're only third in points. Like that, You've had a great season, a very consistent season, uh, but what, what kind of tracks are you looking, up, uh, looking forward to coming up? Well, I've only been to one of the tracks for the rest of the season, Kern County. So it's definitely just like this whole year's been, I've only been to two of the 13 tracks we go to. So it's been a learning process. Um, I don't, I think Kern, I have that track really circled on my calendar all year because I've won a lot of late model races there and a championship. So uh, that's really the only one I can, can tell you that I'm, I feel com super confident by knowing that track because it's the only one I've been to. But I think, uh, like I've done all year, learned pretty fast at some of these smaller, boring tracks. And then it's definitely going to be a different deal going. Uh, we got three big track races, Iowa, Gate, or um, the Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis and then Phoenix. So uh, um, that'll definitely be a different, di whole different deal, I think, different learning experience. Um, and then the shorter tracks, which I'm more used to and I've raced more in my career. Sounds good. Uh, so, um, in uh, so I'm um, doing some research on you. Um, I found out that you had uh, you had uh, raced in 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 Europe for a little bit there. So, um, uh, what was it like racing out there? It's pretty crazy. Um, I went over to Europe when I was for the first time. I th believe I was 11 or 12 years old to race go karts in Europe. I won a I won a championship out here in on the west coast which provided a trip to go to the what they call the rock cup finale in Lenato, italy so i went out there i'd never been out of the country before um and then to go out there and race against the best um kart racers in the world i mean karting and racing for europe is like baseball for us so it's every every kid out there drives and they're every day they're out practicing so the competition's pretty crazy 
um, it was super cool to go out and race in Europe. I mean, it just, and then I was able to go back there. Um, I think I went, did about 10 races in Europe in a span of two years. So that was, it was just so different, different than the NASCAR world, different than any racing I've done in the U S just the whole style of it. Everything of that was super cool experience. You know, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you'd been learning a lot of stuff this season, I guess what so far this year is more the most important, I guess, thing that, uh, you've learned from racing in K and N. Um, the most important thing, I mean, I think a lot of it is just learning to drive a, a bigger, more stock car, um, like a full body stock car compared to a late model, um, which I think is really going to carry me through the rest of my career because um, the NAS, all the top three series are more similar to a K and N car than a late model. So that's been uh, really important to me is kind of learning the difference, learning to not overdrive the cars, to save the tires in the longer races. I think those are the biggest things um, that I've learned, and I'm still learning, of course. I mean, I've only done six or seven races in um, in a and n car, so um, I think I'm still improving on that, and I think that's the most important things, um, not only for this year, but like, like to just for my whole career. Mm -hmm. Digging uh, more into your background again, for people who don't know as much about you, I know uh, you come from a very strong racing family that goes back multiple generations. And uh, I don't know, what kind of influence have they had in kind of the start of your career? Yeah, for sure. So for you guys that don't know, my grandpa was able to start a pretty big le legacy for my for the Jones family in racing. He went and won, and won the Indy 500 in 1963 and went and did – race one races from the Baja 1000 to Trans Am to even a couple NASCAR races. So, um, that's definitely been a help having my family legacy in racing. Um, I mean, when I was two years old, I was sitting watching the Indy 500. So watching my dad race. So it's just things like that. You just grow up around the community your whole life. And I mean, I just, my youngest memories I have are sitting playing with die cast cars, watching NASCAR races. So, um, so I always, my mom always said that she didn't want me to be a race car driver, but she married the wrong family for <laughs> me to be a race car driver. So, uh, it's just in my blood, it's what I've grown up around. It's what I want to do. And then my grandpa, and my dad have obviously been huge sports to my career, um, from buying me a go-kart for my sixth birthday to, um, to working on getting a K and N deal this year. So just everything in between that. So it's been pretty awesome to have that. Absolutely. Uh, so what's the end goal for you? You know, um, um, what are some of your, uh, some of your future plans, um, in the coming years? Uh, like, you know, um, um, next year, do you, uh, still will still want to be in the K and N West series or do you want to move up the ranks? Um, I think, so long-term goal, I'll start from there and work backwards. So my ultimate goal is to be racing full-time in the Cup Series to win races, win championships. So uh, that's the long-term end goal, and it's just the steps to get there. So it seems to be changing a little bit for next year, um, the way they're kind of merging the ARCA and K&N Series a little bit. So I, th I think I'll definitely be in that in K&N ARCA um, type of races next year just because of my age I'm still I'm 16 I'm turning 17 on Monday so I still have a, a year till I'm 18 so I can run some of the big races and um, so definitely doing a lot more shorter track stuff the next year or so and then hopefully when I turn 18 I can uh, get some experience for the mile and a half bigger tracks um, maybe some truck starts that would be pretty cool so with all those plans that you're talking about, um, I, I wanted to ask, there's so many changes going on right now. Uh, what, you know, because NASCAR is more in a transitioning period right now, just all over the place. What is one that you're really excited about that, that you could see really playing into your favor? Um, I think the whole deal, it's a little confused and a little, they think they're still working out a little bit with the, merging of the Canon and Arca series, but I think that's going to affect me a lot because um, I'm still 17. So I most likely won't be racing 
or I definitely won't be racing the truck series full time next year. So I think um, that those changes are going to be uh, really, they're going to really impact m me next year because I'm going to be in those series. And I'm actually looking forward to it a lot. I think it'll give more opportunity for um, teams like us, like Sunrise Ford to go to different tracks than they've been to for the last couple, um, the last, I mean, 20 years in the Canon series. I think we'll travel around a little bit more, racing against more competition. And I think that's ultimately what we need for, to, for the younger kids in NASCAR is to race um, against more cars, more, more people, different tracks more often. And hopefully I'll be able to do that next year. Hmm. Yeah, that all sounds uh, awesome. Well, uh, oh, did you have a question, Darian? Oh, oh, um, oh, did you? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna go ahead and start. We uh, we uh, we uh, mentioned on Twitter that we're gonna have you on the podcast, and so we did get a few questions, mm -hmm. and we picked out a couple that I think might be fun to answer. Uh, so I was gonna start that off here. First one's from Hooten Rooten Scooten Tooten. That's his uh, Twitter <laughs> name. Uh, you're welcome. I read all of that. Uh, he says, if you could drive in any era of NASCAR, when would you choose to drive? Oh, that's a pretty tricky question. Um, <laughs> I wish I could, this is my ideal world, to be able to go test every single year of a NASCAR car. That would be pretty awesome. And then maybe I could make a better decision. But I think um, racing in the early 2000s or so would be pretty cool. Or even, the, I mean, the 90s or so, racing against uh, Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon as a young and upcoming star. I think Tony Stewart, that would be pretty cool. And right on. Uh, the next question I have is from Brian. His question is, are, are, are you better on short tracks or road courses? Um, I've done one road course in a stock car, and it went okay. We did all right in Sonoma. Um, but I've done a lot of go-karting, done a bunch of d different road course stuff in my, in my years. But I would say probably at the moment short tracks just because I've, uh, the last three years I've been racing more short tracks gotten just cause I focused on that more. So I would say sh short tracks. Uh, and another question we got, uh, is from a notorious memer and uh, commenter. What incarnation he asked, what's your favorite NASCAR race of all time? Could be any series that is under the sanctioning body. Mm, I know I saw that question and I was thinking about it earlier mm -hmm. from Twitter. I thought, I really liked um, watching the Homestead race 2016. It was pretty cool when uh, Jimmy went on to win the championship after they, they wrecked on that final restart. Um, I think that was probably one of my favorite races cause, just because Jimmy, who's my favorite driver, was able to go win the championship and all the drama that unfolded in that race. Well, darn, you, you stole the other Twitter question I had. People wanted to know who your favorite driver, NASCAR driver was. So uh, there you go. So Jimmy, all right, cool. We make a lot of Jimmy fans happy. Yep. <laughs> well, there you go, man. Uh, so that'll just about do it. Um, any uh, final thoughts uh, before we before we uh, uh, let you go, Jer or um, or Jagger? Um, uh, anything? Yeah, I know, making mistakes I was, tonight. Uh, I was reading the the questions earlier, and I saw one that said. Do I like pineapples on pizza? Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, I'm gonna give that one a hard no. Warm, yes. warm, warm fruit is is just not my thing. Oh yeah, no, no I feel you, man. Yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, so um, really quick, uh, just um, before you head out uh, out of here, uh, just talk about your uh, your next race and um, where people uh, can find you on social media. Yeah, so I'm leaving around eight in the morning tomorrow to go off to Iowa. We race practice, qualify, race all in the same day on Friday. So you'll be able to watch that live on Fan Choice TV around, I think, 7 p.m. Iowa time on Friday night. Mm. So you guys check that out. I think it'll be a pretty awesome race, east-west combine race. Get a race against some good competition, a bigger track, bigger track than I've ever been, gone to. So check that out. Also, you guys can follow me on social media, um, Jagger with a 6 instead of an A on Instagram. Jagger Jones 98 on Twitter, Facebook, Jagger Jones Racing, all of that stuff. All right, man. Well, uh, good talk, man. Good luck for the rest of the season, and uh, hopefully we'll have you on the show again. Appreciate you coming yeah. on. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, guys. It's fun. Thanks for coming on, man. All right. Take care, man. See you guys. Later. Well, folks, that was the one and only Jagger Jones, one of the rising stars in all of NASCAR, and I uh, want to thank Jared and uh, Natalie Estep 
for doing <laughs> Ooh, yikes yeah I, I, i'm on a i'm on my girlfriend's uh, uh laptop today so and i forgot to sign out of her google account so yeah that's that's i apologize for the confusion chat yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. The whole chat, like they noticed it right away. <laughs> like they noticed it right away. I uh, should have known. Yeah, we have a meme. Yes, so another worry. meme. In the Don't worry. I, I, I feel like I haven't had a meme in a while, so I can. I mean, I haven't been on the podcast in a while, so I guess yeah. that, that'll do it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, man. I I got one. Uh, not from the podcast coming up, but uh, if you subscribe to NASCAR and MDK, uh, he's got something he's working on. And it was something I just couldn't shake off. Uh, so when you watch that, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and it, when I say that, I mean, you will have no idea why it's there. Uh, so, so there will be a meme in that, too. So uh, meme, memes live forever. It's going to be amazing. Yes, memes galore, of course. What else is new in the NASCAR YouTube community? Uh, really quick, before we, uh, before we uh, get going, uh, 55 likes, 149 people watching. Make sure to lick the like button, everyone. So let's get that up there. And uh, yeah, so now that that's now that's over, uh, let's get right on into it. So, um, unfortunately, to begin the podcast, we have some sad news. Uh, Nick Harrison passed away over the weekend. He was 37. He was a crew chief in the Xfinity Series for Colleague Racing's uh, number 11 team that Justin Haley drives for. Um, Nick Harrison had uh, he was a former crew chief in the Cup Series, most notably for Kurt Busch during his stint at Phoenix Racing. Um, even, and then also in the, uh, in the Xfinity series, he was a crew chief for RCR, won some races there and, uh, was crew chiefing for Justin Haley there. And, um, I don't know, it's uh, very unfortunate. So thoughts and, pr- and uh, thoughts and prayers go out to his, uh, friends and family. Uh, just, I don't know, at age 37, man, that, that sucks. It's, uh, too young, just too young, man. Definitely had a lot to give, uh, to NASCAR. Uh, so thoughts and prayers with, uh, him, with, uh, his friends and family. Um, so now moving on, um, the New Hampshire race, and I just want to say really quick, I was getting some crap on Twitter because I was like, man, New Hampshire is not my cup of tea. I just want it out. I just want it off the schedule. I want it gone. But then, just so happens, you know, just my luck, it ends up being one of the best New Hampshire races ever. Well, really, the past two years, it's been pretty good. Jared, what are your thoughts? Uh, I I really liked it. I. Uh... Starting off, you know, at, at first I was like, oh boy, you know, they were settling in. There were a few guys going through the pack, but for the most part, it seemed really hard to pass like New Hampshire always is. Um, but, you know, as the race went on, granted, the the amount of cautions, I think, really helped uh, so that it wasn't drawn out in these excessively long runs that New Hampshire is known for. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot of passing. Uh, there was a, a good amount of strategy when it came to tires and whatnot. Uh, and... You know, I know he had a great finish, and I think, you know, I, I know I more or less complained last week about Kentucky, how I didn't think it was a good race, but it was a great, amazing finish. I think this was a good race with a, a great finish. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Hmm. It, it passes. It, it It is much above the bar that I set for uh, a passable race. It is above the bar I set for a good race. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and... Uh, Man, I, I was I was surprised. You know, I know last year we had a good finish. Uh, I didn't think the racing was as good last year as it was this year, but I will take being pleasantly surprised every week of the year if it if it means that we have good racing. And I'm really hoping I'm pleasantly surprised next week at this time. Yeah, that, I, I don't know about all that, man. It's Pocono. So I wouldn't get my hopes too ho- hopes up too much for that. Uh, really quick chat. I see there is a super chat. I will end up uh, uh, reading those at the top of the hour. So just be patient on that. Eric, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I mean, I was a little more hopeful or optimistic going into this race because I knew last year's was a decent uh, New Hampshire race last year. So I thought we'd – I was hoping the arrow package wouldn't get in the way too much. And I would say, you know, happy to say that this is probably the first, you know, one mile and shorter track where I would say the arrow package, if it had an impact, it wasn't a negative one. Let me put it that way. I don't think it really – I think it was pretty negligible. It really didn't have any uh, – uh, it was a, ne- a negligible, I think that's the right word, negligible effect on the racing, something like that. Uh, so I enjoyed it. I kind of agree with you, Jarrett, that I think the number of cautions that we had early on definitely helped with the race or helped with the entertainment value of the racing. We had more pit uh, pitch strategy. We had more comers and goers. This was one of those races where it was the kind of pitch strategy. I know stages 
played a factor, but I liked this form of pitch strategy where it's not people just, you know, choosing not to take stage points just to get track position afterwards. I think that's lame. This was actually people kind of acting like, should we go for points in the first two stages? Should we play for the entire race? And that was interesting to see how that played out. Uh, and I think the most interesting part of this race, honestly, was the people who ran into trouble, the specific drivers. Pretty much anyone from around 13th through like 20th on the playoff grid had some sort of issue Sunday. And that's like the trouble. That's like the spot that every, coming in, everyone's talking about. That's where the microscope, where we have them under a microscope, microscope and they all struggle. They almost all had issues. So I think that's really anytime there was a spin or a flat tire or an issue on pit, on pit road, the magnitude of it was only amplified because of who it was. So I thought that actually added to it a lot. And then the finish was great. You know, it's, you know, we've had it happen a couple of times this year where the race kind of ends with a medium to long green flag run, but we still get a close, close finish. And that's what we got again. And it's, I like to see two veterans, two guys that are really good at this track at short tracks, or I guess New Hampshire's not really short track, but a race is like when those types of drivers going at it head to head, that was, that's what NASCAR is all about. So it was a, it was fun. It was a very satisfying finish. Yeah, some of those drivers, Ryan Newman, man, he spun out, hit the wall, ended up finishing seventh. Alex Bowman went through a dozen backup cars, it seemed like, <laughs> and was able to uh, run inside the top 10 for a little bit, uh, was able to get 14th. Um, and then some of the str some of the other drivers uh, struggling. Um, Ricky Stenhouse, I mean, that guy It seemed that every driver that had some sort of, of uh, vested interest in the playoff cutoff, whether it was uh, the five below or the five above, every one of them was trying to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. It was insane. It was like every time, I'm like, hey, this guy's yeah, going to have a great does. And there he goes. Yeah. And it's like, hey, look at Larson's having a pretty good day. And uh, there he goes. Yeah. Yep. It, just, it was like that the whole day. So that, I, I agree. That added a lot of, of – uh, I had a lot more intrigue and, and interest in the race – uh, because of who it was too. If it was just like, you know, oh no, BJ McLeod crashed again. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like that's tough. Yeah, yes, I'm gonna forget in a minute. <laughs> Speaking of that team though, uh, Andy uh, Andy Seuss or Andy Suss, whatever his name is, uh, he finished 29th. Man, finished ahead of Johnson, uh, Chase Elliott, um, Austin Dillon, Daniel Hemrick, like like Hall all fame, those guys. Right? Hall, Hall of Fame confirmed, right? Yeah, there. And, I, and I saw a really cool Facebook post from him earlier, just before we went live, where he was kind of talking about how this was like. I don't know. He, he, it was a big weekend for him, obviously, like a, like a mm -hmm. life changing, not life changing, but a, a huge weekend. So that was cool to see him uh, uh, have a good, solid day. And also, Austin Terrio, he ran there too. He made his uh, Cup Series debut, I, I believe. That was his Cup Series mm -hmm. debut. So that was pretty cool. Pretty cool of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, here, I can I can share a screen really quick. We can get what uh, the people in the chat and voting, uh, what they thought about the race. Yes, pull it up. The infamous iceberg poll so uh yeah we i was i was actually really surprised because this race got a better net positive than daytona which is crazy to me uh so 77 percent of you uh thought it was a good or great race uh which compared daytona which was 69 percent nice uh i was surprised i was really surprised but you know 18 percent average i was expecting that but for the most part it seemed like a lot of people enjoyed a lot of stuff about this race motorsports fan 17 he says de benedetto gets another top five how did he get so good all of a sudden i i've noticed he's he's, he's you know been good. ever since the whole bell news came out he's been pretty good <laughs> he and he and busher i've noticed in the last five to ten weeks whichever uh five weeks really for de benedetto and the last 10 weeks or so for busher they've really really turned it uh up a notch let's see go down a little bit uh, slide job slide job says great finish but it's great anytime the 22 doesn't win uh <laughs> subjective opinions are beautiful yeah uh let's see go down a little more and rc45 fan says i feel that it was a pretty good show considering the number of cautions ultimately ultimately led to a great finish between the four and eleven uh, I, I, I think we had both, uh, or we had all pretty much agreed with that. And then let's see, let's see if we can get one more scroll way down to the bottom. I want to, I want to give some love to the people who aren't at the top of the list here. Yeah. Go down uh, to the depths of hell in the chat. I, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, how about Isaac D says Loudon's one of the more underrated tracks in the schedule. Yeah. It's not always a barn burner, but if you catch it on a good day, it can put on a show eight out of 10 for me. Uh, and for the most part, most people thought it was, you know, an average to good race. I, I mean, I, I looked through, I mean, I saw, yeah, there's like one, the race sucked four out of 10. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I can see, uh, you know, with New Hampshire where people come from with it, but uh, I, I'll respectfully disagree this week. But yeah, thanks to everybody for voting again uh, and leaving comments. And be sure to leave it this week for the Pocono race. I'm pretty sure we're going to have plenty of great opinions to look at <laughs> next week. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, the, yeah, this race was really surprising, though, to me. I mean, New Hampshire's never necessarily been the most boring track but it hasn't really been the most exciting either like i mean during the whole gen 4 era i was like more into it but i can say the same I thing even for the cot a... oh i mean like, cot was a... oh they yeah, were good races good. they were good races uh I, I i just don't think the gen 6 has been able to, to really mesh well with new hampshire it's the same way with um you know i think with every generation of car you have you know some are just better for others i mean yeah. california auto club really wasn't the greatest track with the gen 4 car but with the you know the end of the cot and especially the gen 6 it's been one of the best tracks to watch i think the road course racing with the cot and gen 6 is uh much much better with uh than than the gen 4 and same with races at, at martinsville even uh i i think it's just that the gen 6 for the most part hasn't been able to to run well here and and this time it did uh mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, the last two years, they've been uh, pretty good races, either decent or very good, like this one. Uh, so this begs the question, uh, with NASCAR changing up the schedule in 2021, did New Hampshire do enough now to warrant a second cup date? I don't know. I don't know how, who's going to answer that. They're an SMI track, I guess, right? So I don't know. That's mm. that's a tough I, one. I, I, I don't know what to tell you guys feel. That's tough. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that one. That's probably all behind closed doors. I don't think two races, two decent races in a row, is going to make someone come in on like their Monday meeting and be like, guys, we got to get into loud in a second. And again, you know, I don't know if that's going to do it, but I, I wouldn't hate to see it. I'll be uh, no offense to you, Darian, but when I found out they were swapping a, a loud race with Las Vegas, I was not super excited. No one was. Yeah, no I think was. it's like they're pretty equal in my opinion. So yeah. I don't know. I, we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go on a no with that one, too. Uh, I like two good races, uh, generally viewed as good races, uh, is not enough to warrant a second date. Uh, and also, you know, with, with the contract running out soon and with there being a lot less TV money, you got to also think about the attendance more with this coming contract. Uh, and Loudon, you know, I know it was hot, but it looked pretty sparse the last couple of years. Yeah. They got to they gotta figure out how to make that one date good before they can even think about expanding to a second, in my opinion. And right now, they're still in that downsizing mode. Uh, so I, I think Loudon sticking with one race uh, for the foreseeable future should be the plan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I might have to look at some other tracks, too. Even, you know, Vegas maybe might not have a second cup date. I hope it's Please. Vegas, but yeah, I know everyone yeah. wants it gone but me. <laughs> Pretty I don't know. I don't know. That'll be tough. But, uh, before we move on, can we talk about the some of the crazy point standing stuff from the, after this just, Las Vegas yeah, race? Yeah, I was just about to bring that, that up. Next. Actually, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was just about to bring that up. Actually, let me pull, go pull on. it up on a racing reference. Yes, not the racing NASCAR reference. Website. Yes, never go, never go on the friggin' NASCAR website for points. <laughs> like they, even that, they just they, they just completely screw so, that up. I, I pulled it up to look and make sure like what time the Iowa race was, and all of a sudden I'm getting the 2017 schedule for trucks. I'm like, uh, oh wow, friggin the the, site, the <laughs> site has been drinking with Brian France again. I remember when the site used to be good. I remember those days. Yeah. All right, I'm about to focus it on me, and we will share screen it. Uh, yes, the entire screen. Okay, so here are the point standings uh, as of right now. Um, let's look at the playoff ones: Kyle Busch and Truex. Our first and second, Brad Keselowski is third, Joey Logano fourth, Denny Hamlin fifth, Kevin Harvick finally breaks through and scores that first win of 2019, he's sixth, um, Kurt Busch is seventh, Chase Elliott eighth, Alex Bowman ninth, and that rounds out all of the winners, and then the final six can uh, include Eric Almarola, Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, Ryan Newman, and last but not least, Clint Boyer. So... If you look on the other on the other side of the point standings, both Daniel Suarez and Jimmy Johnson are tied for 17th right now, followed by Paul Menard, Eric's new favorite driver, and Ricky Stenhouse. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to say, when you said last but not least, honestly, when it comes to the playoff standings, uh, I think that uh, yeah, uh, I always say that he yeah. is last and least. Yes, uh, he is. The time. He yes, is. he's the least in the playoff standings, but certainly not no, last. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, uh, moving forward, man. Oof, I, I still don't trust Clint Boyer uh, long-term to, to stay consistent enough to even stay 16th in the points. It's just, 
he hasn't proven it to me at this point of the season yet. Well, I'm more disappointed with Suarez, man. He was uh he was like in the top ten at one point there, and just in the span of a month has fallen off a cliff, man. Like uh, a cliff, man. He's just freaking. He's dive bombed there, and then so is Jimmy Johnson too. Like he wasn't necessarily inside the top ten, but he slipped back some. And then um, some other up and comers really quick. Uh, give some props to Ryan Newman. He's holding his own there. Um, just mentioned, you know, got a top ten after you know crashing, and then. Uh, you got guys who are still, you know, holding their own in there. Uh, William Byron, Ryan Blake. Hey, he's Kyle 61 Larson. up. William Byron is 61 points up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 12th position. I, I think he deserves a lot more credit than people are giving him. Oh, I know. People are still giving him some crap, too, for that. Oh, oh, he needs to be running better. I mean, he's doing pretty good compared to last year. It's night and day. Yeah. That's the thing. The jump from last year, I think he finished 23rd in points. And the fact that he's, what is he, like 13th now, 12th? 12th. That's insane. Yeah, that's 12th. crazy. That's a huge jump from one year to the next. Like, I, I, that's, that's impressive. But, I mean, just the gap between 12th and 13th, man. Kyle Larson, I, again, I, I expected him to have a much better season than he is right now, man. It's just, he, I don't know, it's just nowhere to be found again this season. And, man, Kyle Larson fans, just, you know, dreaming of uh, 2017 flashes again, um, minus the playoffs, just the regular season flashes. Of hey, course. man, but, I, I got to be honest, as, as a guy who was a Dale Jr. fan in 09 and 2010, I feel solidarity with Larson fans. I know, you guys are so oh. spoiled, so spoiled, man. Those guys, man, well, I, I, I feel bad for them, I, I'll admit, I, I feel for them. I, I've been there where your driver sucks all year, and it, it I... I understand the frustration is all I'm saying. I feel like, I mean, Larson's uh, pretty mediocre this year. I wouldn't he say he had an all-star suck. win. Yeah. Well, he did have like a highlight. He's had a highlight or two this year. So he's not been, he's yeah. not been a total all loss. Right. Well, here. the same also goes to, for, for Johnson fans too. I think we're, I think we all have a little bit to say on where Jimmy is right now. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot to say. And then <laughs> bringing Stenhouse, the fast and all curse continues <laughs> still in the back. That's like the sound effects. Yeah. Freaking. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, job but uh, really quick, I uh, want to talk about Paul Menard really quick. Uh, not you know Cup Series related, but uh, over the weekend in the Xfinity race had a bit of an incident with Harrison Burton. Um, he ended up dumping him. Uh, I don't really know why. I guess because he just you know Harrison Burton just maybe bumped him a few times on the restart, and then Paul Menard just got fed up with that. I really don't get it, and I know Eric certainly doesn't get it because he was very pissed off on Twitter about it. Uh, Eric, you start us off, man. Was Paul Menard in the right here? I wasn't that upset. I was definitely grumpy because I was yeah, I was grumpy, following a okay. couple guys. There was two or three drivers in that race I was following really closely, mainly because they were young guys making uh, like one of their first starts, including Harrison Burton, and to see him running top five and then get dumped by Paul Menard of all people in an Xfinity <laughs> race, I was like, okay, that's a little that's a little much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Paul Menard, in my opinion, he crossed the line uh, in the video. I talked about it in my video earlier this week, but you know, basically what he was mad about was a little contact on a restart that you could argue was Menard's fault, and then later in the run uh, when they were side by side, Burton slid up and got it rubbed slightly with the twelve car. Didn't leave a mark on the twelve. Well, but a little rubbed him a little bit and then eventually passed him and then a lap or two later that's when Menard dumped him and Menard owned up to the fact that he dumped him it was pretty clear that he was getting even with him for whatever reason uh but I thought it was a bit much especially when you're the only full-time cup series guy a guy who's <laughs> been there before you know Paul Menard it's not like he's still trying to build a career and build a reputation for himself like he's 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 about to leave like there's yeah, reports die. last week that he's mm-hmm. probably out in two years you know so he's basically done with his career and so for him to kind of you know mess with a guy who's still trying to build a career for himself who's only only 18 years old and only is getting a few of these Xfinity options or opportunities this year. And to wreck him like that, I just thought that was excessive. I think you need to think about who you're racing with a little bit before you make a strong decision like that. And I just thought Paul Menard went too far. So I was, I was just shocked. That was Paul Menard of all people. I'm like, Oh God, like if another Xfinity guy got mad, if like Tyler Reddick or like a, like a Austin Sindrick kind of lost his head for a moment and wrecked him. I'd be like, ah, okay, that's just them being young. And mm-hmm. but Paul Menard, I'm like, Paul, you're a little better than this, I thought. You know? He never so, does anything. I'm that surprised. was my opinion on that incident. He never does anything, too. That's why I was so shocked. Yeah. I was like, Paul Menard dumped somebody? What? You know? Well, we, we all know he probably had the same face he always did when he wrecked him. Just Oh, even when Burton confronted him, he didn't care. He didn't really yeah, care at this yeah, point. He didn't, he didn't like, react too much. Yeah, he was just like, oh, I, yeah, I dumped you. I almost feel like, it, you know... And and this is just me like sort of spitball on the idea here, but I almost feel like being the only cup guy in the field, he almost felt entitled to be run differently which because uh, uh, i don't really understand um where he could be coming from with it that the, nothing that that burton did uh, in any way warranted something like that uh i mean you you 
everybody call is calling him out. Uh, you know, for the most part, I don't see anybody defending Paul Menard. I mean, like I even saw that on the, the the Dale Jr. download. Even Dale Jr. called him out and said it. I won't say the exact word, but BS, basically uh, yeah. about it. You know, everyone from drivers to media to fans is calling him out. Um, and I think for good reason. I mean, you're you're wrecking somebody, this kid, basically, because you know he raced you hard. It's like, come on, dude. Like, and, and on top of that, he didn't even like wasn't even a factor. Like Paul He's Menard, the only Cup guy in the field, wasn't a factor really. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like it's just I'm I ain't getting hard for Menard. That's all I'm saying. No, I was very soft. Yes, hashtag get soft for <laughs> Menard in the chat, boys. I, I I would have to assume he was very frustrated with the uh, with the way he was running um, I mean I, I'd be too being the only cup guy in the field and you know losing to you know some of these quote-unquote kids in there but props to Harrison Burton though um, stood his ground uh, stood up for himself um, because I, I feel like most drivers his age would have just played the game and stuff and just we have, I don't know like would have said something on you know social media and then you know would have done his interview and then just left the track but I mean he he ended up confronting him and then I don't know um uh, Jeff Burton's com uh, uh, Jeff Burton's comments during the whole thing were pretty. Uh, I don't know. I was expecting more from him and stuff, but uh, he just played the role of you know unbiased <laughs> was, commentator. Here. it was yeah. funny. I, I heard a bit of insight on that when I was watching that Dale Junior oh, clip. Really? And yeah, so uh, Junior was saying that Burton was uh, was basically like there could not be a more awkward moment like than watching your son get crashed on the track and having to commentate it. And uh, I guess, you know, I think it's either junior or Steve Letarte just leaned over and goes, Hey Jeff, it's going to get a lot more awkward. He's walking over to Paul's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine him being there just like sweating bullets. Like, don't say something stupid. Don't say something stupid. Don't say something stupid. Don't start a fight. Don't even start a fight. Did. Yeah, even if he did, it's totally understandable, though, man. I mean, that's his kid, though. Mm-hmm. And, you know, watching him get dumped, it's not the greatest thing. Gets, in the world. gets here in the booth. Give him a right. Give him a right. Oh, yeah. That been, no, that <laughs> him. Been, yeah, that yeah. would have gotten the ratings up for sure. <laughs> Definitely. I, it was kind of weird. You know, you look at the Xfinity booth for that race, and you got, you know, the three main guys up there. You had Jeff Burton, whose son was racing and competing for the win. And then you had Dale Hart Jr., who's got four cars that he signs the checks for racing in it as well it's just it, it's weird it's weird fan nascar fans just let it happen but it's, it's mm-hmm. it is weird it's yeah, strange. I'm just saying if it were a wall trip people would be upset oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again and again hashtag get soft for menard mm-hmm. uh so uh, speaking of ratings uh ratings recap uh new hampshire um won again um nascar i mean good seasons nascar ratings 2019 man i should just make that video during the off season maybe um uh <laughs> Um, viewership up 12% and also scored a 1.7 overnight rating. Um, I mean, Jared, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on this, man? I'm surprised that this race, I mean, I know it was good, but it, but again, it's New Hampshire, so I really didn't expect um, a bigger turnout than um, than anticipated. So, um, I mean, again, is this, um, I mean, is this, you know, um, um, a trend of, well, you know, NASCAR is, uh, you know, they flatlined and now they're, you know, building back up. Uh, I'd say if they, you know, again, with the NBC Fox transition and then the, the fact that, you know, with rain and all these problems with it causing decreases. And then before beforehand, we had, uh, I believe last week we had a decrease. Now we have an increase, uh, but it's generally in the same area. I, I'd like to see what, you know, Pocono, Watkins, Glen, and Michigan do before I definitively say again, hey, we're, we're uh, completely on the right track up. At the same time, you know, like, because because it's always been a little bit. There's always been a little bit of difference between Fox and NBC with ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Fox it, it was a clear trend. Uh, it was a, a you know small increases for the most part. Uh, so it was a clear trend. It, we get a few more weeks. I am a hundred percent back on that bandwagon that this year is up in ratings. I just want to be completely sure because uh, I don't want to jump right away like last week or something and say, oh, the sports just start, it's going to start going down again. And the, the same token, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon yet and say, hey, the rest of the season's going to go up. Uh, I Again, like I said uh, about the Kentucky ratings, if Loudon, Pocono, Watkins, Glen, and Michigan are all up, I have a lot of confidence going into the rest of the season and then building something for next year. Uh, but as for a trend of, hey, NASCAR's back on its way up, I think we have to wait for that to be a year-to-year thing. If a two or three years of, of upward ratings uh, occur, then I am 100% say yes. This could be the start. It could be a fluke, but we have to let time tell at this point. 
Yeah. yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it is. We still this isn't definitive or anything. I mean, it's definitive that ratings went up for New Hampshire this year over last year, but that's it's not definitive of a guaranteed trend that we're going to see long term. So you're right, uh, but I think it is. It's definitely a positive so far. Uh, and I, you know, the 2.8 million viewers versus 2.5 million. That's 300,000 people. That is a very notable increase. That's more people than watched uh, the Indy car race this weekend, which I know is delayed heavily, but that's a large number of people. And also this week, NBC uh, set a record, a, 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 I guess an NBC record for most people streaming a NASCAR race. They had more than tw- they had an average of 25,000 live viewers at any point during that race. Uh, so that's also good to see streaming while still fairly insignificant compared to the big TV rating numbers. Uh, the fact that it is at least growing steadily is also, I think, a good thing uh, on the TV ratings front. But I agree with what you said. The next few weeks, as we get more and more into the NBC part of the schedule and we get less weather delays, because that's really skewed the data the last month or so, uh, we'll get a better idea. And I'm also, though, going to be interested because now we're going to start going to tracks for the second time this year. The beginning of the year, one argument is, you know, the, re- we, the reason ratings were up early in the year is because people were interested in how this new rules package is going to work out. Now that we've seen how the package has worked, will those people that were tuning in just to check on it, are they going to keep tuning in because they liked what they saw? Or how's that going to work? Like, I'll be really interested with Pocono this weekend because the last time we were there a month and a half ago, the race sucked. Like, I, if the ratings go up, if the ratings for this Pocono race are higher than the ones a few, a few uh, weeks ago, it, it'll mean one of two things. Either one, NASCAR fans have no idea what they're watching, or two, uh, it means that just there's more people, I guess, subscribe to NBC than Fox Sports 1, which I don't mm. think that's true. I think Fox Sports 1 has more subscribers than NBCSN. So I, yeah. I'd yeah. be shocked if uh, ratings go up for Pocono this weekend compared to earlier this year, but it'll be trends like that that I'll just be interested to see. Like when we go back to uh, Las Vegas, when we go back to the Texas later in the year, when we go back to all these tracks, how will that compare to the beginning of the season that, that that would be interesting yeah pocono loses ratings it's not a surprise <laughs> yeah, nobody well I I, i'll say i'll say this too like because again with the different points of the season like like comparing we can't compare like uh we can and can't compare like the texas races because the one is at the start of the season one at the end uh but i think what we can compare with is the percentage increase or decrease because i'd say like like say like one track the first race increases by like five percent uh, but has more viewers because it's in the first part of the season where like the second race is right at the end of the season, but it increases by like, say, 13 percent. Then I'd say like that that one shows that like that track's doing something what right and and more people uh, throughout the year and at, at the end of the year are interested kind of thing. It, it's going to be really interesting uh, with, with that. You know, you know that the mainstream guys won't talk about, but it's like when, I'm so interested each Tuesday to, to find out this stuff mm-hmm. uh, each Monday and Tuesday, to find out this stuff because, you know, each time something comes out, it just adds that little bit more to say, okay, like, you know, this is, is a more and more clear path. Like right now, you know, and again, this is just for this year, not talking in the broad sense of things, but just for this year, like we have a more clear path, a, a cl- better picture of uh, what the overall viewership, the overall reception of this year is with the fandom, I guess is, is what I'm saying. And, and that's that, at this point of the season, that's a, w- with that transition, it just makes it even more fun. <laughs> yes, NASCAR, please stay winning, man. Helps us all out, mm-hmm. man. Uh, so moving on. Um, so surprise, surprise, Kyle Busch is once again frustrated with the package. After the New Hampshire race, he was um, speaking with some media members just about, you know, um, some of the damage he had gotten on one of his um, impressive saves during the race. Um, ended up hitting the wall and uh, just couldn't drive back up through uh, through the pack. And um, even DeBetadetto on NASCAR Reddit sort of uh, um, sided with him on that. But I don't know. At this point, I feel like Kyle Busch is just beating a dead horse. Like, I mean, we understand, yeah. like, yeah, like... I mean, this water is wet, too. Yeah, like I, I mean, it, it, it's Kyle Busch upset with the package. It's something that's going to happen the whole time. I at this point, you know, I, I'm just I'm expecting him to say something about it when he's not saying I don't want to talk about the package. So yeah, like I don't know, like I mean, a Pocono is like oh, I'm done talking about the package, and then proceeds to talk about the package some more. I mean, I get his frustration, but I mean at the same time, I, I mean, drivers but, always. Well, there's certain drivers that always there's certain things that get under their skin. For Kyle Busch, it's his package. For Tony Stewart, it's Goodyear. Dale Jr., it's tandem racing. You can go on and on and on. Every driver has something. I think this is especially has gotten under Kyle Busch's skin. Uh, 
And so that's what I think it is. I don't think it's anything different about each race at this point. I think it's just that he is frustrated overall with something. I, I just think this is a case, and I know in the past Kyle Busch has complained about things despite being successful with them, uh, like the car tomorrow. Oh, oh, he froze. <laughs> Natalie Eastup, what is going Natalie on? Natalie Eastup, no, girl, no, go. <laughs> we raise our glasses to you, our yes. fallen friend. We raise our glasses to Eric Eastup, who is uh, frozen. Hold on, let me check the stream. Is he still frozen on there? Yeah, he's like, yeah, just, just that face. Yeah. <laughs> Clip that. Clip that. Start memeing that. Sister. Oh, there you are. He's back. You're back. He's back. No, did, did I lag out? I saw you guys go still on my <laughs> as screen. Yeah, you froze as soon as you said bit. that he was successful, it, it stopped on you just looking off into the distance. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's yeah, really cute. Yeah. Well, okay, sorry. Well, I was making, I was hopefully making a good point. Let's see if people disagree with me. Um, no, what I was saying was, I, I feel like in recently this year, whenever Kyle Busch is not successful, that's when he speaks out most aggressively against the package. I know it's not how he's always been in his career, but it's how it's been this year. Like he finished, you know, he was running eighth in this race i know he led for the first half but once he fell back once he spun himself out he was basically the only car or only driver to spin out by himself in this race everyone else had tire issues suarez hit oil uh but kyle bush just wrecked himself like i just i understand frustrations the package isn't exactly what you'd like but hey you had the horsepower in this race you had the horsepower back speeds weren't high enough for there to be any major aero dependency i didn't hear a single other driver i guess besides kyle bush i didn't know matt benedetto mentioned something uh but besides those two guys i didn't hear a single other driver mention anything aero related all weekend long it just it, it's it is it's him making an excuse kyle bush he's matured quite a bit just in the last decade but he still is I don't know. I'd say he's on the lower end of the maturity scale compared to most other drivers. So he's going to slip into this mentality sometimes where I think he makes up excuses uh, for his own poor performance. And this week, I think, is one of those. When he talked about it at Pocono, which he won the Pocono race, and despite that race sucking, he really didn't go after the package much after that race, which is why it's hard for me to take him seriously this year because uh, that's just the trend. you know. Uh, when, he, when he bashes it at other tracks, he has a point, uh, but New Hampshire... I don't know. He didn't have a point in this case. It just sounds like he's trying to cover his ass for a bad performance. I feel like it's just Rowdy being Rowdy. He's always going to talk no matter what, whether, you know, he wins or loses. And then, like like you just pointed out, you know, when, he, um, when, he's, uh, when he's more successful, then, yeah, he's not going to speak up as often. But in this case, yeah, I, I totally agree with you 100% on that. Uh, so moving on um, to another diva. Uh, <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse Jr., man, he's, I, this guy is so funny to me, dude, like, you know, he'll, like, I mean, you had that mess last year, uh, you know, with the whole, you know, with those, um, you know, wrecks at the plate tracks, and then, you know, um, going after Kyle Busch, calling him out, um, because Kyle Busch, you know, called him out, it was, um, that was all, um, that was weird last year, and then, you know, now this year, He's just, I mean, he's underperformed. Um, the first five races of the season, he was solid. He was, he was, he was inside the top ten in points, um, and now he's just, he's just falling off the face of the earth here. And now, it's gotten to the point where he's calling out Eric's boy, Eric Jones. Now, um, Eric Jones had gotten into Stenhouse during the race. Stenhouse had to leave, um, scoring another DNF. And uh, Stenhouse said afterwards that um, he better watch it. And now Stenhouse is pretty much planning uh, his revenge on Eric Jones. Um, I don't know, Jarrett, um, you start us off here. Uh, is this warranted or should Stenhouse just, you know, cut this out? Because he has more important things to focus on, such as his performance. I, 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 and honestly, I don't think Eric Jones has anything to worry about because Eric Jones will be running ahead of Stenhouse all race when he's yeah. not crashed. Um, I think Stenhouse is another person who is very much like Kyle Busch. I think that's why those two... Uh, had so much of a problem of making excuses for his for his performance too. Every time something happens between somebody, it's always the other person's fault. Every time something happens just with Stenhouse alone, it's, you know I don't know what happened. This and that. It, it, Ricky Stenhouse is <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse. I guess is the discount Kyle Busch. Uh, no, he's the discount of the discount of Kyle Busch. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. He's on the buy one, get three free rack. Yeah, you, you, uh, you cut off about half a foot of height every time you go to each discount down. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that, honestly, I think it was just probably heat of the moment. Uh, I don't think – I, I really don't think he's going to do anything. I hope he doesn't because, honestly, that would be a really, really stupid thing uh, for him to do. 
but I don't, like I said, I don't think Eric Jones has anything to worry about. He's probably not going to see, see Stenhouse all except maybe once or twice during a race, uh, especially at tracks that Jones is better at, like Michigan. I don't think he'll see him at all um, unless he's lapping him. Bristol, maybe. And we're maybe, be there yeah, too, maybe. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure. I'll be sure to record that. But I'll see that in person. I I, th- I think this is just a giant, you know, giant nothing. It's a giant nothing, uh, and I I think he just he'll let it go. And if he doesn't, then that's Stenhouse got problems. <laughs> I am surprised though that NASCAR hasn't you know overhyped this quote unquote rivalry here. Like I mean, last year they were like you know basically like you know hyping up oh Kyle Busch versus Stenhouse. Look at this Kyle Busch. Yeah, it's but Kyle then Bush. again it is I, I, Kyle. Bush. That, this is no offense to Eric Jones, but he is not Kyle Busch. Yeah. Uh, he has not the same personality as Kyle Busch. He's not the same uh, caliber of driver at this point yet that Kyle Busch is. And do you really think Ricky Stenhouse was like the part they were pushing on there? They're pushing it. They weren't pushing it because it was Stenhouse. They're pushing it because it's Kyle yeah. Busch. But they did. Hype up, Kyle Busch. They did hype up um, earlier in the season. You know, Suarez versus McDowell. You know, for that one weekend, <laughs> which I thought well, was they, like. Eh. To be fair, they did punch each other yeah. a little bit. I'll, I'll give them a little bit of credit that, for that. That and to be honest, the ISM race wasn't that great. Whereas we have a, we had two good finishes to talk about. We have good, good racing to talk about, playoff stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. They don't need to push a pointless rivalry right now. Yeah. So yeah, I, I am not surprised at all. They're not pushing it. Yeah, it's just a shame though. Like Stenhouse, I mean, I mean, two Xfinity championships. I thought, oh, okay, he's gonna you know fall right in with uh, Rouse uh, with uh, with Rouse Racing, and then he's gonna you know maybe win some races here and there, and but. I don't know, more and more, I don't know, it seems like he's becoming um, a more polished version of Derek Cope, you know, going to win two races and then never win again. I mean, I don't know, that's the way it's looking like. I mean, I don't know, that ride could go to someone like Chris Buescher, you know, and I feel like Buescher could really, you know, improve that team's performance or, hell, you know, if, it, I don't know, let's say, you know, Matt Kenseth wanted to stay around and, you know, maybe just give him the 17 again. Now, that would have been pretty awesome, but that would have been. Again, though, again, folks, the fast and all curse is real. I am still doing that, and uh, I'm thinking about um, doing. Um, I, I'm I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about redoing the whole bad seasons video again from 2018, and then you know um, making a follow up to it for the 2019 season. But again, it'll folks, be a yearly thing. Yes, it'll be you know a yearly occurrence. So um, fast and all, you you um, you messed up, man. You messed up, buddy. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Uh, all right, wait. Is Fast and All going to be on his car this week? I have no uh, idea. Chat, help us out I, there. Help us and out. I want to know, Eric. What, what I guess, since you being an Eric Jones fan, what what do you think, man? Yeah. Well, I, to be fair, I understood why Stenhouse was a little frustrated because Eric Jones basically did to Stenhouse what Harrison Burton did to Paul Menard in the Xfinity race. He rubbed him. He rubbed into him a little bit on corner exit. NBC did not have a good replay, so it's hard for me to sit there and say it was all on Jones or on a little bit on Stenhouse for maybe trying to chop him off because, you know, they dime in the corner that way. Could have, so it's hard to tell who was really at fault, uh, but it wasn't much contact. I understand why Stenhouse would be frustrated with Jones, but kind of like you said, I don't think he's really going to, I don't think it'd be wise of him to overreact to the situation. Like Paul Menard overreacted to the Burton thing and everyone's bashing him for it. If Stenhouse actually does dump Jones at some point later this year, uh, I think that would be excessive. I think most fans would call him out for that as well, and I think it would be bad for his brand. Now, that being said, if Jones and Stenhouse are racing for position, which very good chance they will be at some point in one of these next races, Stenhouse is not going to give an inch, and there's a good chance he will put the bumper to him here and there, especially if it's a shorter racetrack. I think uh, Stenhouse, and I wouldn't blame him for it because I, you know, Eric Jones did look like Jones did nudge him a little bit, so we'll see. And plus, Stenhouse has he has nothing to lose at this point. Anyway, basically, yeah, I mean, 20th in the standings, um, I guess, you know, there's still somewhat of a chance, but I mean, you have to have a a lot of luck. Yeah, like they got to win. They got to win, man. And I feel like they have a lot of luck. Yeah, like I feel like their best opportunity would be Bristol based off of his (laughs) performance. But then again, you know, Stenhouse is so inconsistent. Eric Jones is good at Bristol. Oh, yeah. Stenhouse is good at Bristol. Maybe a one-two finish. Stenhouse versus Eric Jones for the win at Bristol confirmed. Yes, and the NASCAR YouTubers get to see it live down there. Oh yeah, whichever one of them spins the other out will be right in front of us, and they'll they'll just stop right on our wall. Yes, and right then there. they're gonna start fighting each other. That'd be great. Oh, I would love to see that. That'd be so much fun. I am Nostradamus. I say it to be. Yes, <laughs> I speak truths. I then, speak the truth. 
and then and then uh and then what's his name quinn half he'll get a top 10 that was playing yeah yeah anyway, happened. Okay, that's, that's that's see it. <laughs> uh, uh one can dream um so uh really quick um we are approaching the top of the hour let me read some of these super chats first and then we will invite the one and only ryan vargas on the podcast that's gonna be he's got cool. some exciting things to talk about yes, i'm sure some very exciting things and uh and, and uh pretty good uh, uh pretty cool paint scheme i guess he's running uh you know uh, the little uh, charity logos on his car um on the flex steel car even though it's you know not sponsored by flex steel it's the flex steel team flex, yeah it's a flex steel team yeah it's the flex steel team it's the same team ross chastain's been driving for uh, the last couple of years oh yeah and plus I, I don't know vargas um he was pretty good here in the K&N series um, when he raced here. Um, he was running inside the top five before he had some mechanical failures. So, you know, anything is possible here, man. I could see him, honestly, I could see him scoring a uh, top 20 here. That's not out of the question to me. I think that's probably, I think his goal probably should be to try and get a top 20. That would be a really solid, I mean, that's that's probably, you know, 15th place equipment he's driving. If he could get a top 20, that would be, a, I think that would be a, a successful weekend. But yeah, I'm excited to talk to him a little bit about it. Yes, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, so let's see, Flying Gator. Uh, his um, he had said this is to help Eric find a home. <laughs> so one dollar is one dollar and ninety nine cent. That's uh, going towards you, man, or at least a portion of it. At least a portion will go. That, it's you. the thought that counts. Yes, and Carl Singleton with the five dollar super chat. What do you guys think of the fact that that Eric Jones still has a chance to save his job? Um. <laughs> I mean, was he really on the hot seat to begin with anyways? Or? I don't know. Everyone, everyone's acting like he still doesn't have a deal done, so everyone's acting like Bell could still swoop in and steal that ride, but he's back-to-back he back top done, right? He does have a deal done, right? Or is that Jones still in the works? Jones does work? not. Oh, Jones no. does not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was uh, – I mean, is it – mm. And Christopher Bell actually does have a deal. We just don't know where and what for, so that's, that's what makes it a little concerning. I can understand some of the speculation. Yeah, we still don't know yet. What do you think, Jarrett? Uh, I, I didn't hear the start of the question. What was oh, it again? Oh, uh, hold up. Let me pull it up again. The question was, what do you guys think of the fact that Eric Jones still has a chance to save his job? Uh, he performs. It's, it, I, I, I'd say if he yeah. performs, he gets the job. You, you perform, know? you get to stay. You perform, yeah, you get to I, stay. I, I, it's the, the thing we talked about for a long time where Toyota has that <laughs> that problem that great thing that turned into a problem of having too much talent too in development. Talent. Uh, so, you know, there's always someone breathing down your neck. Uh, but, you know, I know it's they're They, they keep saying he, they're working on something. Um, he'll be, he'll be in one way or another with a JGR Toyota in 2020, whether it's with an affiliate or JGR, I assume it's going to be with JGR. Cause I think Bell will stay in the Xfinity another year. Uh, so I don't think he's on the hot seat just yet, but I, hope not. I think next year would be. I hope not. Move Bell up to the Cup Series, man. He's earned it. He deserves it, man. Hopefully. I mean, hopefully there's uh, some some competitive ride available, though, but we'll have to see. All right, so um, that'll do it for the Super Chat. I just sent Ryan. I think we got another one. Oh, we got another yeah, you got one? one more. You got oh. one more while you're reading those. those. Oh, you got a no. nice, uh, crisp $10 Super Chat. Oh, I got $10? Hold up. Let me pull up the link. Let me pull it up again. <laughs> I don't have the chat up right now. Let me see. You want me to just read it to you? Yeah, just read it to me. I can't pull it up right now. Uh, Sterling says, celebrating my birthday today. Would love to discuss NASCAR with y'all one day on, on the podcast. Love the show and all the work that y'all do. Keep it up. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you, man. Absolutely. We gratefully appreciate that. And uh, really quick, let's do a, a really quick summary. 174 watching, only 94 likes. Let's click the like button here. Let's get to 100 right before Ryan Vargas pops in here do it yes that'd be pretty cool so yeah oh uh evan what's with the stone head uh i actually put it back there just so if people would notice so thank you for noticing <laughs> oh but is that the first time oh wait oh oh no no no, no, no. it's second yeah, yeah the second, second time yeah, but that's I, right. I i've had this in the background of the podcast for, i had it for months when i was at my dorm mm-hmm. and nobody ever noticed it until i pointed it out i was like there's something in the background look in the background yeah like he, like he had it since the beginning of, of season two and i'm like <laughs> i'm like watch somebody's gonna somebody's gonna notice it on the first uh the first episode but then like, i will not be putting a dancing crab in the background stoneheads are the memes that i use that's it yeah <laughs> right on man all right wow, wow. so uh while we wait for vargas to get in oh, oh oh my camera turned off damn it god damn it <laughs> 
more malfunctions. Okay, there we go. I hit the little wire thing. Okay, now I'm back. I'm good. I'm good. All right, so again, yeah. what the hell's going on? This damn camera. Oh my gosh. You can't oh even... my and now there it goes. It's uh, I see I see your hand. Yeah, this, again, I don't know what's up with this camera tonight, folks. You hit it a little bit and it's stuck. Okay, hold on. While I get while I'll, 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 I'll get the whole thing fixed. Um, so let's move on. So um, really quick. Just um, leave it off. Yeah, just leave it off for now. Uh, moving on. Uh, so Kyle Larson, it is official. He will be returning to Chip Ganassi Racing in 2020. That's official. There were some rumors going around that. Oh, he's he's probably going to go to Hendrick, this and that. But it's official now. He's going to stay put over at Chip Ganassi. Uh, Jarrett, uh, what do you think he'll he'll do in the future? I don't know. He's so inconsistent. It's hard to, to get a gauge on what he's going to do at this point. Uh, he could turn it around with uh, having stability. You know, maybe that was a problem. I don't know. Uh, at the same time, he could be doing – he could stay on this path of, of going downhill – over the last couple of years he's been doing. Uh, I think something needs to change, whether it's a crew chief, whether it's somebody behind the scenes, whether it's just in Larson's head. But I, I think that if there isn't some kind of change somewhere, uh, you know, and they don't even have to say really what it is, but there's got to be some sort of change somewhere for him to, to improve. Uh, if not, if it's just keeping everything in the place that it is now, I, I think he's just going to do more of the same that he's been doing the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's kind of, you know, I'd be a little concerned about, you know, spending a lot of money or signing a long-term deal with Kyle Larson if I was Chip Ganassi, just mainly because, you know, when they brought Kurt Busch in this year, I thought that would elevate both the 42 and the 1, and the 42 stayed about where he was last year, whereas the 1 has come, just gotten so much better thanks to Kurt Busch. Uh, so that, that would have me a little concerned that Kyle Larson has not made any gains this year uh, compared to last year. So. We'll see. He, would you worry that maybe he's plateaued and this is really it for Kyle Larson? He's just going to be a solid playoff driver's career. Uh, I, I still believe, and I think most people still believe that he has championship potential uh, long term. He's still very young. How old is he? Like twenty five, something like that. So he's mm -hmm. still got plenty of room to grow. Um, but that would be the only thing that has me a little concerned: the fact that they brought in a veteran. The Chevys have improved this year. Uh, his teammate has improved this year, but he has stayed the same. That that's the only thing that's a little concerning. Yeah, Kurt Busch is. I mean, he's. The number one guy over there now and i did not expect that at all and i mean just the way he's turned around that team i mean it just sucks because i mean 2017 you saw championship flashes just um, a ton of championship potential but you know he hasn't really lived up to it since then so i don't know i don't know what the deal is with that but um hopefully they get it figured out i mean are there certain personnel changes that they should make or or what eric I, I have no idea what it is because he's been working with Chad Johnston, I guess. Has he been working with him the whole time he's been at, at Chip Ganassi Racing? Maybe it's the type of thing where they not, might need to mix that up a little bit. Maybe that relationship is it's gotten to the point where it just it can't grow, it can't get any better. They've they've gotten too comfortable. I have no idea what it could be, but uh, sponsors could be another problem. Kurt Busch showed up with a bunch of Monster Energy money behind him, whereas Kyle Larson, I feel like, has done a little bit more losing sponsors the last few years than gaining with Target and then with DC Solar, their whole issue. It wasn't really Larson's fault. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe there's just a lack of funding going towards that 42 car. I fully believe right now it's – I think this year it's been the package. I think last year it was the Camaro held, holding him back. I think this year it's been the rules package a little bit. I think that has thrown Larson – for a loop more so than it has a lot of other drivers, but there it is. There we go. Oh, there man. We are, okay. Boy, what's up? Finally, finally, we got you in here, man. Hangouts. Every dead. time, every time I do a hangout, something goes wrong, and I always feel terrible. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I know. Tell me about it, man. No, it's not you though. It's freaking hangouts. Google. They're gonna shut the whole thing down. So they just gotten lazy with it. But man, you got a big weekend coming up here. Want to talk about that? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. A little big. Uh. We're doing Xfinity. We're, yeah, news is out. We're going Xfinity racing, boys. Um, really excited about that. You know, that's been a, a long process of getting stuff going for that. And uh, I'm just really excited to get going. You know, everyone was – it's really cool to see all the response that I've gotten since the announcement. You know, I've had so many people reach out. I mean, people of such big influential names in the sport, you know, have even, you know, reached out or commented or shared. I mean, you had Jeff Gluck, who's – been a you know he's been a really big supporter of mine and it's kind of an honor to see that and you know he's sharing all that stuff and just everything that's been going on it's just really cool absolutely dude i gotta i gotta ask you though man uh with it being you know xfinity such a big stage you a little nervous 
<laughs> um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Um, you know, every driver gets nervous before a race, but you know, with this being on such a big stage, you know, all the people watching, all the all the big names in the field, it's definitely going to be a a new task. But I guess you would say I'm more anxious because I'm more excited than I am nervous. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just outweighs the other. Mm -hmm. What are the expectations for this weekend? Um, when I talked to you a couple weeks back, you were uh, saying, you know, maybe like top 20, top 25, somewhere around there. Uh, do you feel the same way? Yeah. You know, I feel, I mean, heck, I mean, I, I, I mean, every driver wants to go into a race saying I want to win the damn thing, but you know, I'm really excited to go there and, you know, just learn. That's what, that's what the whole thing is, you know, just go there and learn and, you know, run all the laps, keep the fenders on the car and, you know, um, just run my own race, you know, and let the cards fall where they land. How, how did this whole deal kind of come together? It feels like it sort of came out of nowhere. I know people who've talked to you kind of got, got a little bit of an idea beforehand, but what, what was kind of instrumental in getting this whole thing put together? So, you know, when I last year when I got the word of, you know, I wouldn't be with Rev and heading into this year, I knew that I needed to stay in a stock car. You know, running late models and stuff is a great way to keep me in the seat and keep me, you know, getting the repetition of being in a race car, but I also knew I needed to be in a stock car. So I kind of reevaluated my schedule. I wrote down about three K and N races I wanted to do. And, you know, I've talked to several people who are in the sport who, you know, are, you know, run, you know, work at other teams and stuff. And I say, Hey, you know, I have the schedule. What, how do you recommend me go about this? Like, who should I talk to? What, how should I go about getting sponsors? And I was told to throw that schedule away. Hmm. I was told you need to throw that schedule away. You need to, Forget about anything Kane and you need to go run a, run an Xfinity race. And, you know, from then on, you know, the entire goal was to make an Xfinity start this year. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate to come upon meeting Johnny and meeting him through some people and, you know, just putting my face in front of the team at the track. You know, I mean, I think I saw Darian at the track in Vegas. You know, I, that, that whole game plan that week was just, you know, meeting teams and Johnny Davis Motorsports was one of them. Yeah, yeah. When you um, um, when when we were at 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 uh, um, pole position, um, um, you were like saying like, oh, um, I have this uh, I have this uh, deal in the works, and I was like, um, oh, so like trucks or something like that. And never in my in my wildest dreams did I think it it, it was going to be Xfinity. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Trust me, neither in mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, knew, I was like, I was like, yeah. So like when you told me. Um, um, a uh, a couple weeks back, I was all like, "What?" I'm like, "What?" Like, really? That's so awesome. Yeah. So I was so hyped, man. It was so cool. Uh, so you. um um your um your boy's also making his uh, debut too. Uh, Will Rogers for uh, for um, Brandon Built Motorsports. Uh, kind of talk about that. What's it uh What's it gonna be like racing him? You know, it's gonna be really fun. You know, and you know, I I know Brandon, all them, Colin Fern over there really well. They're all really good guys, and I'm really excited to go out there and race with Will. We always give him. We always. Talk, talk, talk bad about him, you know, joke with him saying, oh, we, Mr. Road Course guy can't do left turns. So, you know, now it's actually going to be head to head, me and me versus him. So it'll be fun. Um, you know, Will's a really good friend of mine. He's, you know, I always forget that he's, still, he's, he's 25. I always forget that he's like s mm. seven years older than me. So, yeah. but at the same time, I do, I do look up to him in some sport, you know, some, in some aspect, you know, when it comes to the marketing side, you know, I've learned a lot of my lessons from him and when it comes to marketing. So he's a good guy and, you know, I'm really excited to race with him. Mm. Yeah, I, I gotta say, you know, you're talking about different people uh, in the community who, you know, were reaching out and, to you and stuff. And I was saying, just looking at both Twitter uh, and then people on YouTube and stuff, like when everyone like found out, like I can, I never seen so much excitement over over someone starting an Xfinity series. Uh, it's just everyone was like, "Oh my God, he's he's gonna be up there!" <laughs> like, what time is it? Like, what, what car? What, like all that. So, I, um, I, I guess I just what is, what's it like, man, having all these people just be able to support you like this both bigger names and just fans in general who are so excited to see you uh it, up in, up in there it it honestly means the world to me like i you know I, it's kind of a personal really awesome subject you know it's 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 really it means a lot because i'm just a normal kid like i portray myself as a normal kid i'm just sitting here wearing my davy allison t-shirt like i'm just <laughs> i just like any normal kid yeah, oh, same, yeah. Dude. I cooked some. Yeah, the there you go. Yeah. I cooked, you know, I was making some turkey burgers earlier. You know, worrying about, my, you know, getting some bills paid. But at the same time, you know, um, you know, just I think a lot of it has to do, you know, with how this whole this whole year has tra uh, transpired. You know, 
like I said, you know, not with the news that I got in the off season, and then you know, with my family, you know, my grand my grandparents, and you know, just everything that's gone on, you know, it's been it's been a steady incline of really awesome things, and it's just it means the world to me that I have so many people who see the work that my family and I are putting in and how much I'm willing to do to get where I want to be. And I think it just kind of showed right there. I mean, I go like, like I was just telling that I was just mentioning earlier with uh, Darian, you know, I was, I go to the racetrack, you know, I'm at the cup races and the Xfinity races and the truck races in the garage. You know, I may not be there with the team, but I'm there handing out business cards and shaking hands and meeting people and meeting fans. Cause I know that that's, what's going to keep me in the sport and keep me relevant. And so far it's worked. And, Obviously, when that announcement came out, it, it blew up. <laughs> and um, I wasn't anticipating anything on that scale of how big it got, but I'm blown away and I'm unbel- unbelievably thankful. So looking back now, I guess, in the, you know, in the grand scheme of things, was um, Rev Racing releasing you possibly maybe the best thing that could have happened, maybe? I mean, now that you're you know, getting this opportunity? You know... I wouldn't say it's the, I would not say it's the best thing. You know, I, I've always looked at everything, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, there's always, you know, something, everything happens for a reason. And when one, I see it as when one door closes, another opens, you know, I was going to, you know, going into this year, I had zero races on my schedule. And now, you know, thanks to the support that Lombard bros and my family have been able to step forward, you know, I have 30 something late model races on my schedule. That's insane. That's more races than I than I used to do on my own on our own dime back when back in twenty seventeen prior to Rev. And now adding to adding an Xfinity race and hopefully knock on wood more. I mean like it's I mean you can see it. Like I just I don't like I don't know how to really put into words how crazy it is. Like in just the short span, my whole life has been flipped upside down and then upside down again. And it's amazing. I don't mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess what, uh, you know, I guess there's a bit of a story behind what's on the hood of your car this weekend. Kind of go into that a little bit for people in the chat who, uh, who might not know like yeah. the, the story behind it. So, you know, for, for those who don't know on the car this weekend is cranial care bears. They are a nonprofit organization who raises awareness and helps families going through the process of their kids getting surgery for craniosynostosis. I was born with craniosynostosis, which essentially meant um, this, my soft spot on top of my head closed and it really just caused the right side of my head here to get flat that I was, which is also called corneosynostosis. That's this specific part of my skull. And that's actually why I have this scar. Like it actually goes all the way around and it goes like that. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have had as not a pretty moderate, uh, form of craniosynostosis. So other kids, you know, they have much more severe and others have much less severe. And, um, you know, once I got hooked up with Cranio, Cranio Care Bears last year and really got to learn about what their organization does, you know, with getting, helping these families out by, you know, supplying them with what they need during this process because it, A, is expensive and B, is very lengthy. You know, when I got my surgery, I was in the hospital for five days. My mom didn't sleep through pretty much a single one of them. Mm-hmm. So for these families who are going through this, it's a very important and very dangerous process. So, you know, any, everything that cranial care bears does, whether it's, you know, giving the kids, you know, during their recovery process, process, you know, a toy or, you know, some love and stuff like that, or helping the parents out, you know, pay for their surgery or, you know, even, you know, give them their needs, you know, toothbrushes and stuff like that, just so that they, you know, have that. It's, it's incredible to see that. And I didn't know that there was something like this for cranial synostosis until last year. And I'm very excited to have them on the card this year. Absolutely, man. That's a good deal. That's awesome. Good deal there. So um, I guess my final question is, you know, if this goes well, um, what like do you, um, what um, what are your uh, what are your plans uh, for the rest of the season if this does go well? Continue the sponsor hunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at the end of the day, that doesn't you know, I know that it's going to definitely be a big uh, resume. You know, it's going to be added to the resume. It's going I'm going to be able to go to teams and say, hey, I've made this this Xfinity race, I've finished here, we didn't have any issues, blah, 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 you know, instead of going to a team and say, hey, I'm a K&N driver, you know, it it's adds a little bit more to your name, and it, you know, adds a little bit of more, um, it makes, uh, it gratifies your name a little bit more, I guess you could say, it, make, it makes your name more relevant, and it just helps you in the long term, and 
you know, going forward, I hope to use that to my best capabilities and hopefully land me in some more cane in more K N or more truck or even more Xfinity stuff. Cause you know, at the end of the day, I just want to keep racing and that's what it's all about. I actually had one question that just kind of hit me. Um, so I know you talked about that when you went to people at the beginning of this year, trying to figure out what you want, what your schedule is going to look like for 2019. Uh, people told you just focus on Xfinity, focus on trying to make a big jump like that. Um, I know, I remember, I think it was Austin Terrio we had on here a few months ago. And I remember this stuck out to me. He made it very clear that it was important to him to get into like a cup series car, which I know he did this last weekend at, a, at wherever we were last, this last week, I forgot the track, yeah. New Hampshire. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of, is that kind of the same mindset that you see with a lot of young drivers? It's all about kind of, you know, it really is beneficial if you get on the bigger stage. The bigger the stage, the more opportunities are open up to you. I know you really haven't you haven't raced yet yeah. in the Xfinity Series, but yeah. is that kind of what you anticipate? There's just going to be a lot more opportunities when you have Xfinity next to your name. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot more opportunity there. And Austin is one of the people that I talk to thoroughly, like throughout the off season. You know, he's a really he's a proven race car driver. He won on record championship, and he's well deserving of a ride. And definitely. You know, going going forward into 2019, you know, I mean, going into 2020, sorry, I forget what year we were in all the time. <laughs> um, you know, I knew that I knew that with how this, you know, it is with sponsorship moving forward in this sport, you know, I can go to go to a company and say, hey, you know, we're going to put XXX dollars and do this K&N race and, you know, we'll more than likely win. You know, it's a great car. I've ran there. We could we could knock it out. Well, where's their return where's mm -hmm. their return in that versus an xfinity yeah. race it's national tv it's live it's seen you know it's streamed everywhere you know and i'm not knocking you know the kane and arca stuff but it's just it's so much harder to sell something for those series and moving up through those ranks and getting into the xfinity car it makes that whole process of selling stuff and making yourself more able to do those other races that much easier so, you know, I know it's the most, it's, it, you, you mentioned it earlier. Is that the I, uh, mindset that a lot of these young drivers have? No. You know, if it was my, if it was up to me, I'd be in a and n car this year. I'd yeah. be in a and n car or I'd be in an ARCA car, you know, because I know that I'm not ready for anything full-time Xfinity. You know, the more laps I do, the more I'll be prepared. But as of right now, my only choice is Xfinity. Yeah. It's just the nature of the whole situation around stock car racing, I guess. Yeah, a little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. On. Oh, that, that's a cool answer. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, good answer. Of course. Uh, so we're not going to hold you up uh, too much here. Um, does anyone have any final questions for Vargas? Or I, I have one. So, oh, yeah. I think uh, all of us probably want to know this one. I'm a little selfish on it. Uh, so you're saying you're going to different Cup and Xfinity races, being in the garage a lot. Uh, are you gonna? I just want to know for sure. Are you going to be at Bristol? Oh, that's the plan. I want to be there. I don't. What's the date of that? Twenty or seventeenth, I think. Seventeenth for cup. I'm more than likely there. I'm more than likely there. Awesome. I should be there. If I'm there, I will let you know because I want to be there. That race last year was my favorite race I've watched in person. The night race is something that any fan needs to go to. It, like, if you've never been to an NASCAR race, go to the night race. <laughs> yeah, we'll Please. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there for sure, man. It's gonna be a blast awesome. out there. Well, uh, thank you so much, Vargas. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on the podcast. And, uh, man, hey, you know, uh, NASCAR YouTube is uh, behind you all the way. And good luck, man. Thank you. I mean, hey, I'm not that busy. I got eye racing on in the background. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I was doing laps on I was doing laps on Iowa before y'all called. Oh yeah, um, got same time. Man. So you know, I mean, I appreciate you guys having me, and I appreciate what you guys do with the YouTube stuff. And you know, it's kind of cool to. I, I've been trying to dabble in a little bit with the vlogs and stuff, and you know. It's been a lot of fun getting to meet you guys and yeah, learn more about vlogs. what you guys have. Yeah, very entertaining vlogs, by the way. If you haven't subscribed to Vargas' channel, go down, go and subscribe to it right now, man. Pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, man. Well, I appreciate having you on, uh, have, uh, I can't even talk. Having you on, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Freaking all over the place hey, tonight. Hey, don't do that in your post-race interview, Ryan, or yeah. pre-race interview. Don't take notes if from how score, dare Yeah, you. if you score a top 10, I just, do not do what I'm doing. I just don't want to <laughs> fall down the driver intro stage. That's ah, all I go. don't want to do. Yeah, there you go, man. There you go, man. Yeah, best of luck this weekend. Yeah, best of, yeah, luck, best of luck, man. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, take care, man. See ya. Later. Later, man. And that was Ryan Vargas, ladies and gentlemen, a very talented driver. Hopefully in the future we could say, you know, 
Cup Series driver, maybe, perhaps. So hmm. yeah, let's get Xfinity it. Series winner before we go all the way to yeah, Cup right. Series. Yeah, Xfinity yeah, Series yeah. winner and then Cup yeah. Series winner and stuff. But then again, you know, Xfinity, uh, you know, um, some of the some of the best uh, Cup Series drivers ever. Um, they never had you know the most success in the Xfinity Series. For example, Davey Allison, and doing some research for a video uh, pretty soon. Um, he never won a single Xfinity race, so maybe I don't know Vargas. Um, if he goes to cup and finds success somehow, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, so really quick, uh, recap: 157 watching, 112 likes. Make sure to lick the like button, everyone. That's gonna be cool. Want me to do a quick lightning round, really yes, quick, before we go on our to next stuff? Yes, lightning rod. All go right. Ahead. All right. All right. All right. Thing, well, it was announced that PJ1, the substance that's been used at seemingly every track this year, will be used at Pocono because Pocono needs all the help it can get. Yeah. Uh, goodness. And then some. Bub and then some. Uh, Bubba Wallace uh, had set, had. This is such an odd story. Had gotten his arm signed by his boss Richard Petty, and said that <laughs> if he got forty three thousand retweets, remember it was just only forty three thousand retweets, he would have a tattooed on his arm. Well, it's closing in on that, and he copped out and mm. said that, oh no, it was twenty four hours. I meant. You backed out. You backed out, man. You never said that in the original tweet. That shouldn't count mm -hmm. there. But, I mean, yeah. still, 36,000 in 24 hours? It's not bad. We are part of a revolution. Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of... I, I have no good transition to this one. Watkins Glen pit rules are changing. Uh, for four-tire pit stops, you have to change the ones that are on the outside. Basically, you have to be closer to the cars going by on pit road first if you're going to change all four tires, just in the name of safety. Uh, Bob Pockers put something out about it earlier. It, it was very, um, what, what's the word? Confusing, the, the mm -hmm. tweet he put, because it's like, you know, mandatory four tire pit stops and stuff. And they're like, wait, so people can't take two? Wait, what? <laughs> it was it was weird. Uh, Jordan Anderson, he won't be running the three car or the three truck at Eldora. Uh, he was on the podcast for, if, uh, you know, many of you probably remember him. Uh, and he. Uh, you know, he did this last year, I believe it was, had Ryan Newman in the three truck. Yeah. So this is to be expected. But just so for anyone wanting to watch Jordan Anderson on Eldora, you know, that he's not going to be there. Like, he'll be there, but he won't be on track. Um, and then one little thing that, again, I'm going to go a little selfish here, that's about us and a, a friend of ours. So the Core League and Griff Dog have partnered up. This coming Sunday, we're going to have the Summer Showdown be a core event. Yeah, so boy. Well, yeah, we'll have 15, 16 core drivers, both past uh, core drivers that we've had on, uh, as well as some future core drivers, uh, and as well as people from the Esports League, from Carnation Cup. Those will be in the Open. Open is at 7 Eastern Time, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, on the core channel, uh, Sunday night. And then the main event will be on the core channel as well. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll just sort of, you know, I I, I, don't, I won't go too in-depth with it. Basically, though, the top five guys in the Open, they'll be in the main event. Then we'll have eliminations at each stage, uh, and, well, it's going to be really fun. Keep an eye out if you're subscribed to Griff Dog. He's going to be putting out a video uh, about it soon, and we're going to be putting on uh, some stuff probably in the core channel as well as maybe a few of our own. So mm -hmm. Summer Showdown, Sunday. 8 p.m. Eastern time on the core channel, be racing Xfinity series at Iowa. And thank God I didn't say nationwide or Bush series. Cause that's what I keep saying every time series, eh? I did it right. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Yeah. It's, it's a 100% race too, isn't it? Yeah. hundred percent. Yes. Yep, yeah. So it's going to be a long evening. Yes. People oh, and one, one little thing that I didn't remember, but attention K day shoppers did for us is this Friday will be the one year anniversary of Bobby Allison being on the podcast. And so, uh, also, that's pretty cool. And it's also my birthday too, again. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. Happy yeah, birthday. I remember that last year, dude. I remember that. I, 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 I totally remember that last year, man. It was so much fun. Like, I'd, I mean, I'd be scared if you forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, like, I mean, just like, <laughs> I don't know. Just like when we had Allison on, dude, that was like so, ugh, that was so awesome. And then it was on my birthday too, which was doubly awesome. So, I mean, it was pretty cool. Good times, good times, man. Good memories. Classic. And that feels like more than a year ago, man. We've come a long way in a short amount of time. Oh, I know. Yeah. It was, it was, even though it went wrong at the end, it was so fun. It was it's it's so still fun. iconic. It, it, the earliest uh, NASCAR Weekly podcast meme. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, what's funny about it is um, I found out my birthday was this Friday on Monday. I totally forgot, honestly. Like, I was, like, going through the dates. I was like, oh, yeah, it's my birthday. That's right. You know, older you get, the less you really care, I guess, these days. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not that old yet, but I'll be getting there pretty soon. So. Right, anyway, so. that's lightning round. All right. Thank you, Jarrett. <laughs> Moving on, let's see. Uh, let's see. We got a few more topics to go over. Oh, uh, now this is definitely esports ready. Um, and for real, like not joking. Um, NBC Sports and iRacing will be collaborating in the first live event on NASCAR America tomorrow. And the cool thing about that is, uh, if you guys remember from last year's, oh, we had Evan Pasoko on the show. He will be the commentator on the first official live broadcast. Uh, for for iRacing, man, this is just this is. I think this is huge overall for esports, but especially awesome. for iRacing. iRacing, for iRacing, you know, for for people online and YouTube, social media, and, and a lot of younger fans, uh, has been legitimized for a long time. It's the gold standard when it uh, comes to video games or simulations but, of routes. First, soccer. yeah, uh, but I, I always got this sense that the the mainstream NASCAR fandom, the mainstream. Uh, NASCAR media didn't take it as seriously as as, as it deserved to be, uh, and I think this this just goes so this so well into uh, helping iRacing be legitimized. Pe- people aren't gonna you know oh it's just a bunch of people you know they're just sitting on there playing a video game. No, it's it's actually difficult you know. And mm-hmm. uh, Eric, you had said in your video uh, about it that it, you know some people have been able to go from iRacing and and into actual mm-hmm. racing and take stuff they've learned from the simulation. Uh, mm-hmm. You see drivers, Alex Bowman has talked about a lot, uh, you Ty know, Majewski. and Dale Jr., Ty Majewski, Ty Majewski yeah. uh, Joey Logano, all these people, Denny Hamlin have all talked about how, how important it is, William Byron, how important uh, it can be to helping, uh, you know, with on-track production. So this this is huge. Uh, I'm yeah. definitely going to do my best. If I am if I can't tune into it, I'm definitely recording it and watching it because I, I can't mm-hmm. wait to mm-hmm. – I can't wait, man. It's exciting. It is something yeah. that – I remember seeing articles in NASCAR Illustrated back in 2006 about it. And, and now these people, you know, some of the people in that article are going to be racing on TV. So man, this is this is huge. Yeah, some uh, some some history making stuff uh, going on tomorrow, and you yeah. know, um, for for what it's worth, like you know, this was you know the right move from by NBC and you know by NASCAR to sort of put this league on here. You know, got a ton of names, ton of big names in there. Um, unfortunately, Ray Alfala, um, the biggest name of them all, hasn't had the best season. Um, so it's basically been bad seasons at Ray Alfala 2019. But I mean, he's still a champion though. Still like you know the best driver in all of iRacing racing to me. I feel like it's just you know, uh, the whole package they're using in in i racing that sort of um, you know um, chained him down. You know, sort of you know put restraints on his talent. But you know, um, if he if he if he if he ends up winning tomorrow, then that'll be amazing. Yeah, you mentioned Jared that this is big for esports and for iRacing, but I think this is big for just NASCAR in general, just because and I talk about this all the time. I think people who maybe are somewhat familiar with racing but aren't as familiar with it perhaps or you know, if they see start to see iRacing and this on TV where it's a much wider, much bigger audience, you know, I think iRacing is like a really good way. It's it's the most cost effective way to get into stock car racing if you actually are sitting there thinking I could do this like as a career, you know, like we talk about how drivers go from uh, from iRacing racing to real race cars and have success or how active drivers use iRacing racing as, as kind of a learning tool. You know, I, I think that's huge too, because it's expensive to go get a real race car and find your local short track, find people who know how to work on the race car, go there every week. Like that's extremely expensive. And I know iRacing racing is expensive by video game standards, but compared to the, you know, going to the real track and everything, it's much cheaper. And I think, you know, that's a big problem with NASCAR, especially in America. We heard, uh, uh, we heard Jagger Jones said that, you know, in Europe, a lot of people race cars and stuff like that's a big deal over there in america not so much not that many people race cars but if people knew more about iRacing, racing knew that there was a more uh, effective way of doing it without breaking the bank entirely it could have you know we could start to see more talented drivers on the scene i racing will definitely grow if this is successful mm-hmm. and uh, i think that could just be good for the sport it's already it's already really big but this could take it to new heights and uh, i see a, a lot of whose racing career started on a computer in the <laughs> chat right there yo yeah yeah uh, nice. good event and uh make sure to uh tune in to nascar america tomorrow to to watch it um where i, I they're racing at 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 pocono right 
I think so. I, no, I yeah. wasn't able to catch where they were racing at. I only saw the announcement. Yeah, I only saw the announcement. It didn't really say the track. I hope I hope it's not Pocono. Yeah, that, that would, be, would suck. That would suck. Be a waste. Then like, watch it be the if it is, watch it be the best Pocono race of the weekend. It probably would be, yeah. not gonna lie. But no, we'll probably see. will. If it is, we'll definitely do a whole race recap on that race before the cup race, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Do the whole podcast on the iRacing event, really give it the respect it deserves. Oh yeah. Right on. Right on, definitely for sure, man. Uh, so moving on, um, um, a fun little question I have, um, I asked on Twitter yesterday, who is the most underrated young prospect in NASCAR right now? So I want to ask the panel here, who is the most underrated slash overrated prospect in NASCAR currently? Hmm. Um, are we just talking about like young guns in general, like, or like that can be in cup or are we talking just all uh, around? You know, uh, let's do all around here. Make it more fun. Underrated Chris Buescher. Yeah, actually, that would be my answer too, especially with how well he's been running the last couple months. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that JTG is as good as it was in the late twenty, uh, or late two thousands, uh, early twenty tens, which wasn't saying much. Uh, but I mean, you see how Ryan Priest is doing. I, I think Ryan Priest is a is a very competent and talented driver, uh, and and he, for lack of a better phrase, he, he doesn't look good. It, 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 it's close to garbage territory. Whereas Chris Busher is outrunning all of RCR. He is closing in on the top 20 in points, I believe. Uh, he, he deserves so much more credit for what he does in that 37 car compared to really anyone else. Like people give on you know, and rightly so give credit to Matt Benedetto for what he did in the 95 the other day. But I think what Chris Busher has been doing in that 37, the last couple of weeks is just as impressive. Really uh, last, so Chris Buescher. Really the last couple of years, honestly. I mean, like, sure, you know, he doesn't, you know, win races and doesn't get many top 10s. But, I mean, he's still up there, you know, in the top 15 and top 20 most of the time. For the, yeah, he's for the taken long. a big step forward, though, this year. It's been very noticeable, especially, you know, last couple months, I'd say. I'll throw – he's not – he's probably not underrated now. But I would say compared to three or four months ago, you know, he was very underrated. Tyler Reddick. Uh, after he won the championship last year, everyone considered it a fluke because he only won two races. And one of them was Daytona, so a lot of people considered that a fluke. He's gone into RCR equipment in the Xfinity Series this year, and I mean, he's looking like he might win the championship again. And he's already got, what, like four wins, something like that? Uh, Richard Childress has already said, hey, we're going to try and get him in a cup car full-time next year. Like he's, His rise all of a sudden has been pretty meteoric, uh, even though you know less than a year ago people were calling him a fluke. So I think yeah. he's been – he was very underrated, it turns out. Now he's probably pretty properly rated, I, I guess. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, he's having his uh, first child too. So congrats to Tyler yeah, Reddick on that. Yeah. I mean, the that Xfinity really? Series had their Names Are Made Here commercial all year long, and Tyler Reddick was not one of the names they were mentioning. I know, and he was, he was the previous <laughs> champion too. I don't, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, they had like John Hunter Nemechek in there, but no Tyler Reddick. And I'm Noah like, Gregson yeah. too. Yeah. Like, oh. Oh. Come on, guys, you did it wrong. You have to get, you have to include the defending champion in that. Yeah, That's so he was definitely thing. underrated three months ago. He's probably not now, though. Yeah, but eh, it's whatever. Maybe they um, – is he in the in the updated ones yet or no? I think he was in an updated one. I remember seeing his name mentioned. I was like, they finally updated it. Like, it, took, it took like four months, Man. but they finally put him in there. Watch them have so. Michael Annette in there before. I mean, Michael Annette's like, he's having a good year, but like, watch them yeah. put him over before Tyler Reddick. They'll put Ryan Vargas in there before they put Tyler Reddick. <laughs> oh, man, right on. Uh, so <laughs> what about overrated, though? See that that one that one's tougher for me because when you have a lot of these young guns, there's not you know obviously that them being young, there's not as much to go off of. I saw people put Natalie Decker. It's like yeah, no, 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 Natalie Decker is not overrated because you know the, there's a reason that she's become a meme in the community. Yeah. Uh, it's, she's not overrated. She's discluded uh, right. for the wrong reason. Mm-hmm. John Hunter Nemechek, he could be in that discussion. I, I think Harrison Burton and Tom Gillen can be in that discussion with how they've performed. Uh, I don't think there's one definitive one who's overrated. I see a lot uh, of Ryan Priest's in chat. Ooh, I don't know about that yet. I think he's with. I think he's with the bad team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that same thing with Hemrick. I've been a little disappointed with Hemrick this year, but then the fact that Austin Dillon's also taken a big, big step backwards makes me think it may not be all Hemrick. So that's tough too. Yeah, it might be a team issue there. Really yeah. for the most part in both of those situations. For overrated, hmm, I'm gonna go to Xfinity. Right now I have to say uh well for Xfinity, I'd say it's Graxon right now, just based off of the expectations. He was getting a championship caliber ride. But it is his first year, so um he sort of gets a pass. And in trucks, Todd Gillen, without a 
like no question is the most overrated right now in that series and and to some extent Harrison Burton as well I mean both in KBM trucks not inside the playoffs yikes yeah I did not expect that this season yeah I think I think it's all good I think I don't know part of me just because of the amount of hype she gets is Haley Deegan but she does have a lot of haters as well still Mm -hmm. a lot of people that still don't buy into her so I can't say she's overrated but I do think you know she's gotten I think she's over over discussed if we're just going to compare her look at her on the track performance or on the track statistics for her career she's definitely that doesn't hasn't warranted all the conversations she gets around her but uh i can't say she's been overrated because there still are plenty of people that aren't fans of her and she does have a couple wins this year so plus we still have a lot of time to go she's only like yeah like 18 18 now i'm I'm reaching for that one though if i stick in the top three series brandon jones comes to mind but i feel like people (laughs) are starting to catch on that brandon jones isn't really going much anywhere after this, I, you know, no, you know what? Ride. You know what? No. I, I will not be surprised if he somehow lands a cup ride just with you know the money he has. I, won't I don't surprised. know if if he wasn't in Toyota, if he was if he was like in the Ford, like in if he was like in the Penske or Roush system or something like that, maybe I'd see him sneaking in there. I mean, he I was know. with Richard Childress before, so I mean, that's true. Maybe maybe he goes back over that way. I don't know. I don't know if Matt Tift can get a, a cup ride. Then who knows? But you know, I I said this not too long ago, like when Bubba was going through his uh, his sponsorship woes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in 2020, next year, um, Brendan Jones lands the 43. I don't know. Just think about it, man. You know, I mean, Brendan what? Jones has all the money and stuff. So, ah, this is true. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, though, just with the way the sport is. I wouldn't be surprised if Brendan Jones somehow lands a cup series ride with, like, maybe the Wood Brothers or maybe, you know, Richard Petty Motorsports just because he brings that um, that that funding. And, I mean... He's, um, I mean, he's pretty bad for the equipment he's driving in, but he's certainly not the worst out there, though. No, no, yeah. he's, he's not incompetent, but yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's, if you're going to go with a pay driver at Richard Petty, I got to believe there's better options before Brandon Jones, but I don't know, maybe not, but, uh, mm. I'm sure there's yeah, better that, options for, uh, for, I, uh, Crosley Racing when they, uh, we were looking at drivers, but they went with Jack. I don't know. <laughs> well, money, money talks, I, man. Money talks. I, I yeah. got you. I, the, well, the number 43 Menards Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say with Paul Menard possibly uh, on the exit in a couple of years, I've heard uh, Austin Sindrick go into that 21. I don't know. That would be, that'd be See, something. Austin Sindrick, I, I, I'm still, I still have some high hopes for him, man. So he gets I, that one, I wouldn't be as upset with that one, especially going to Wood Brothers. I think mm-hmm. that would be a pretty fair ride for him, but he's got to do something in Xfinity before then. You know, I, I just yeah. I don't know. He's a good road course racer, though. So I feel like, man, he'll 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 win one. He'll he'll end up winning one of these road courses in Xfinity before the season's over with, and maybe before the playoffs. So, man, we'll have yeah. to wait and see on that one. But uh, yeah, let's see. Moving on, uh, Matt DiBenedetto. <laughs> this guy is uh, this was crazy. He lost ten pounds, uh, in uh during the New Hampshire race after scoring a top five finish. Uh. Again, it goes back to the whole thing. Well, NASCAR drivers aren't athletes, says the you know the freaking stick and ball sports fans who are sitting on the couch and weigh like four hundred pounds, you know, in their mom's basement, basically. <laughs> like, like come on, guys. Like, I mean, that is that is a lot there too. I mean, um, isn't that now now? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that the average they lose per race, anyways? Or yeah, it's ten usually. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. that's crazy. It's good that's back in the spotlight. I I totally forgot about that, but. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's really a good no, note. yeah, there's really no question to it. Like, oh, what do you think of him losing 10 pounds or whatever? But, yeah. I could He's lost- lying. He's- yeah. I wish I could lose 10 pounds in one afternoon. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, really quick, let me pull out my phone. I have some more topics on there. Um, some rules changes were announced again, and some also some uh, some – pretty uh some brand new deals going on with uh smi and isc so bob hockers reported today uh france family owns majority of isc uh which is publicly traded stock the smith family owns majority of smi which is also publicly traded stock if isc shareholder holders approve uh, a brand new deal uh the france family owns all of isc and if smi shareholders approve the smith family owns all of smi um, which means no more uh, publicly uh, pu- publicly traded stock. Um, so I have to ask you guys: Do you think a merge is in the works for, um, with these two companies? I think so. I think with ISC and uh, and and NASCAR have already kind of announced they're merging. I think SMI is trying to go that same route. Uh, I think 
I don't know. That, that's just that's the impression I'm getting. I think that's what they want to do. And I don't know if it'll be. I, I, it remains to be seen whether or not this is going to be a good thing for the fans or for the sport. Gives NASCAR an awful lot of control. I feel like, but it also, uh, you know, it gives them the, the ability to do what the fans want them to do and react a lot quicker than they might have been able to before. But hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think the, I think they're going to try to merge. There's, I think that's kind of. I think that's the vibe I'm getting, and I and I think NASCAR is still thinking about a trying to sell or trying to find a buyer for all of NASCAR. So they want to b- absorb as many other properties, make them as valuable as it possibly gets before they can turn around and try to sell it to somebody. Yeah. I think with, with this kind of merger, there, there's a lot of stuff that goes through my head on this. Well, like one, we, we all know it's not official by any means. It's just mm-hmm. the stuff that's being talked about. Um, but I, I have to think part of me is like excited, like, yes, we can get a lot of, of different schedule changes. We can have radical schedule changes you know, if NASCAR has all this control. The other part of me is like, I don't trust NASCAR already as a sanctioning yeah. body. They've yeah. had so many blunders. Um, and that's not even, that's, you know, not even including Brian France here. That's just NASCAR in general has had many blunders in it in the last couple years, especially the last 15 or so years, especially. I am not comfortable giving NASCAR that much power with the tracks. It's kind of scary, know? honestly. Because I, I, I talked about, Again, this is such a there's so there's two sides of this coin um and and one side of me is like the part of me that feared that with isc being absorbed into nascar and having that merger that they could just basically say screw it you if you don't want if we don't have the dates we want we'll just we'll leave and you guys are stuck with this that part of me gets kind of pushed down like okay well that but on the other hand with with all of the tracks being owned by nascar that would also give them the opportunity say indycar at texas give them the opportunity to choke out indycar if they say they they want a double header and they don't agree to it well you just don't go to these tracks we own and you know and if from there if they want to continue buying different tracks and whatnot it there is a definitely a possibility in my opinion of this of a giant monster forming with nascar basically having this power that could hurt not only themselves uh but also racing as a whole you know in the u.s you know in major series that that there and again that might not happen but i always the way you see it there's always something you don't see coming uh when nascar does some sort of change right Mm -hmm. you you saw the package When, when they showed the package and testing at las vegas the first one they showed was not very good. It, it really wasn't. But then when the, you see the ones like Darian showed at night and you didn't realize that night racing was going to be probably the best possible thing for this package, that's an unforeseen thing. Now, Grant, that was a good. There could be plenty of good that comes from this we don't see. There could be plenty of bad. I'm just saying that people that are immediately jumping on and saying that this is going to be the fix-all, solve-all problems here, I mean, I've been watching NASCAR the last twenty years. There's yeah. al- there's always something that happens. Something always. There's goes something wrong. we don't see. It always something always goes wrong, whether it's you know a little bit or you know a lot. And I don't know, just like imagining NASCAR having that much power over the schedule. That's I don't know. It's a know it's a it's that. both good and bad. Like I said, it, like part of me is excited. Like man, like if they can finally move Bristol out of where it rains a lot. Man, they can they can get Martinsville's night race on a perfect date if this one doesn't work. The other part of me is like I could they really could if they wanted to have four Las Vegas races. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Yikes. They really could do Indianapolis four more Las than Vegas once. Races. Well, I'm crazy. just saying, you know, the extreme here. Obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like I I don't I'm not comfortable with NASCAR. Until they start making better decisions consistently all the time, I, I, well, not all the time, but consistently for a majority of the time, I'm not, it, I'm not in favor of them having that much power. I, I'm very nervous, I should say. I'm very yeah. nervous of them having that much power. Now, I will add on to that. One other possible positive, though, is the fact that this would make them, it would make it possibly more likely that NASCAR would sell. And that's another thing where I think if somebody comes in and buys NASCAR, it, it would depend on who, definitely. But I think a change in leadership or a change in just mentality over there uh, could do wonders for the, uh, for the sport. I do still think a lot of people, although there, I know there's been a pretty good amount of turnover within NASCAR over the last couple of years, uh, but I think 
that could be a positive if we if they overhaul that bring in some people who i think nascar a lot of those guys are still living in the past bring in people that are more up to date with a lot of things i think that could do wonders for the sport so um i i do agree with you though uh, jared i think that's it's for now i'm gonna lean towards it's a positive but time will tell there's definitely it gives nascar the opportunity to make bigger mistakes mm, yes that's right we'll just have to wait and see and again like <laughs> eric just said only time will tell uh the last news of the night now i laughed when i when i um when i saw this on twitter um nascar is eliminating the arm's length definition <laughs> uh, when it comes to the un to the un, un uncontrolled tire rule and uh, teams will be penalized for an uncontrolled tire if they create a safety issue or interfere another competitor's pit stop um okay what so you're basically replacing a gray area rule with like something that's totally you know a whole gray area thing like how yeah. like how how can you possibly like you know judge or dictate that like i don't i don't really understand it eric what are your thoughts yeah i kind of agree with you there it's they took something that was already kind of a gray area rule and somehow made it less clear now what is an, is not a penalty so that's yeah. i don't i don't like that aspect i do like though it does sound like it in other words they're just going to try to not enforce this penalty as much. So that is the one plus side. Every race these this year, we've had two or three, uh, two or three, you know, uncontrolled tire penalties, and often they're confusing and unclear. Now, hopefully, this means we'll have zero, maybe one per race, and that would be at least then it'll be talked about a lot less, and it'll have a less lesser impact on the race. But it's still not very clear. I saw Bob Pockers tweet out kind of a diagram showing like where in the pit box and outside the pit box, it was okay to roll the tire. And that made it a little more clear, but still the whole, like, if it's a, if we deem it a safety violation, it'll be a penalty. I'm like, Oh, oh good God. God. What is that's, a safety violation? Oh, that's, that's, no this is even worse. I think they just made it worse now. I, yeah. I'm afraid that they did. I think that I do think they'll have less. We'll see less uncontrolled tire penalties. So that'll give the illusion that it's a better rule. But I think now when the uncontrolled tire penalty is enforced, I think people would be more angry than ever when so, it is. Mm-hmm. I think that's the problem. Yeah. I see a lot of people saying this in the chat. We have some b- 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 breaking news, but I don't think we're going to be too excited about this. Um, and it's, let's see, it's about the fairgrounds. Uh, Adam Stern tweeted this a few minutes ago. Uh, and this is, the, uh, I can't tell who said it. I, I'm just looking at the tweet itself. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's the city saying there's no viable plan for NASCAR at the fairgrounds. <laughs> and they're, this is no. Well, listen to what they said okay, because okay. it's so <laughs> condescending. Oh my God. Um, Go it, it, it's you obviously don't want a giant eyesore uh, next to a giant brand new soccer stadium. This old woman is old and she needs a facelift. In fairness, though, I do think <laughs> the guy who said that Tony Formosa, he is the owner of uh, the Fairgrounds For, Speedway, so he's actually yeah. from the track saying that. So that makes it a little better. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty rough. You know what? You know what? You know what? Everyone was getting so hyped. They were getting so high. NASCAR's returned to the roots, and then they just freaking proceed not to. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, uh, yeah, you know what? Hey, it's you know, not for lack of trying, at least. Okay, but but yeah, at the same time though, it is my fault for falling for this mess. I am not going to do it anymore. I am never falling for any of this crap ever again. I mean, with the whole you know you know returning to the roots, and then like you know trying to get um trying to get NASCAR back in, into certain places. Like it's. Oh, it's so it just breaks my heart, man. It's so annoying. I can, I look here. Uh, I see if there's anything else in the article that might be of uh, news. Uh, but you know, they're they're saying like obviously sev- several hurdles making NASCAR to national reality. Uh, the city first, the city having to show the willingness to be a partner. Uh, so screw you, Nashville. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, the presentation quoted 425 million in economic impact annually. Wait, oh, this is about you know SMI reports generating significant uh, economic impact on their current markets. 425 million is the current one for Bristol. Uh, man, if you're gonna even get half that and turn that away, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Man, um, yeah. let's see. Like to ex- other things, I need to expand the stands, fix the asphalt, add sound barriers. And modernize the facility. SMI says they would need sixty million, paid for, uh, paid for largely in revenue bonds and revenue revenue generated by the fairgrounds. Um, let's see, race fan. Okay, I don't know why they're quoting a race fan here, but race fan Shane Smiley's often cites <laughs> the fact that seventy eight percent of Nashville voters 
voted to keep the racetrack in tw- a 2011 referendum. That's a big thing right there. That That is a huge disconnect between city leaders and the people actually living in the wow. city. So not screw Nashville, screw Nashville city leaders. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, tough. I know soccer's popping nowadays in the in the U.S., but damn, in Nashville, come on, city leaders. You're like, telling, yeah. I mean, they just they they killed it. They ruined everything. They just ruined <laughs> everything again. Uh, I, I won't say it's completely over, but it, it's. I mean, the, it's, the odds are are stacked. I'd say it's about more. it's about eighty percent over with. Uh, I'll give it eighty yeah. percent. I mean, it's, it's, it's over with maybe for the time being, but it's, it's, so in other words, we're not going to see it in 2021 or 2022 back on the schedule in any way that, which we already kind of knew that was a long shot. It's still, it sounds like it's still, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think they're still interested and I think it's just eventually you're going to have to get the right people, the right conversation started. I I don't know. It's Uh, again, fans, again, NASCAR fans never fall for this crap again because it's never happened. Like they always freaking like, you know, like hyping this up and shit. And I mean, especially this year, I'm sorry, I cuss, but. Uh, especially this year like they've been hyping us up with these new races and stuff and returning to roots and then look what happens it's like a bubba walk back has been what steve phelps has been steve phelps has been on the walk back tour the last few yeah. weeks and now yeah. now nashville is jumping in with we're it. gonna return to the roots well hold up wait wait i know i said this but what i actually meant was man it's ugh, it's whatever but yeah. uh what well, we got anything else because i want to uh, get on a happier subject this you know, is that's that's it that, that's actually it though like that was everything all right okay. let's go to picks yeah, right, let's, let's go, go to picks picks, picks will be ha- yes oh wait we're picking for poke and hope oh right god now. see the, the entire <laughs> no. the freaking ending of the show man now it's so sad now we're we picking go. pocono let's go no nascar at nashville and now we're picking for pocono oh my god man let's, watch let's... pocono be the best race of the season Oh my goodness! If it is, if it is, you know what? If it is, I'll set my freaking apartment on fire. If it is, it'll never happen. I'll set and you're on a watch list. Yeah. I, I said it was only during a 24-hour yeah, kind of thing. Only yeah. If it's not good within 24 hours, then it wasn't good. It doesn't count. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Let's start off with with who's gonna suck. Jarrett, start us off. Uh this. Okay. This. I'm gonna go a little theme tonight. Uh this driver. I think that uh, he is. He's fallen back a little bit now recently. Uh, he did not run very well at Pocono before. I'm just simply – I'm not looking at past Pocono races other than this year because it's just it, – it's much different in my opinion just because Pocono this past year was – it was a chore. Uh, and certain people were doing pretty bad that do that do usually pretty well there. I'm going Jimmy Johnson. Uh, I think that the, the bad times continue on at least another week. Uh, so Jimmy Johnson is going to suck this week. Stenhouse again. If you're running fast and all, you're sucking again, man. And if not, then you're just gonna run terribly. So that's my pick, Stenhouse. Go ahead, Eric. And this one, I don't know. I feel risky taking picking this one because I believe he finished top five here earlier this year. But I'm gonna go with Clint Boyer. I just think this was his last. You know, when we were here almost two months ago, he ran well. Uh, but since then, he has just run bad. I mean, there's no other way to say it. he's just been bad for a month and a half. And I just think I don't think Pocono is gonna be a Clint Boyer saving grace. So I'll go with him good pick uh so moving on um let's see underdog picks Jarrett, who's your underdog i was saying this guy needed to have a, I'm, again i'm going with the trend here I, if people can't uh, people will be able to tell the trend pretty well here in a second uh but i was saying people need to notice this guy he's been doing a lot better than people think he's had a vast improvement from last year to this year uh he ran all right in the first pocono race and i think He's going to continue an upward trend. William Byron is my underdog pick. Ooh, and that is my pick as well. William Byron, man. Um, they've been on a tear as of late. And uh, again, I've, I'll say it again. You know, come playoff time, he's going to shock a lot of you guys. Aaron? Dang. Yeah, I actually had William Byron as well. <laughs> Wait, yes. Has that ever we got happened? a three feet. Has that we got a three feet. I don't think I don't we've think ever done ever that has. before. We need Danny, Danny oh to call God. in. Danny, Danny, who, who, who's yeah. your pick? No, no, Alex no, no, Bowman. He's gonna ruin it. He's gonna ruin everything, man. Oh my God. Yeah, I, yeah. I, he, what he, he finished? I pulled it up. He finished ninth year earlier this year, but I just, he's just. I feel like this is gonna work out for him. I feel like the big fast tracks is where Byron has thrived the most this year. Yeah, and chat. I promise you guys, that was not planned out. We never tell. Hey, I'm gonna pick this guy. Let's just all pick him and stuff like that. There's no manufactured oh. stuff on here. No gimmicks. No gimmicks on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that uh, was that was funny. Um, and last but not least, winner's picks. Jared? All right. I, I think y'all can kind of tell the trend I'm going on here mm-hmm. uh, is Hendrick. Yep. 
I think a Hendrick guy is going to win this week. Uh, this guy ran pretty well uh, the, the last race here, top five. I think that he's going to keep the good uh, Pocono vibes going. I think with guys like Kyle Busch being in a bit of a slump, uh, that the seas are opening up for somebody not new to win this year, but somebody who hasn't won as much as a Truex or a Kyle Busch to win. I'm going Mr. Popular, Chase Elliott. I think Elliott's going to win, and I think that uh, NASCAR fans will be very happy, very happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. going to go uh, very bo- with a with a very boring pick here. Uh, Kyle Busch uh, is going to score his fifth win of 2019, and he's not going to ask for package questions anymore because he's going to win, and he's just going to keep his mouth shut about the package. That's usually what happens there. Um, now, Eric, who's going to win? Uh, I will go with another Joe Gibbs Racing driver. This man finished third at Pocono early this year, and he's coming off two straight third-place finishes at uh, Kentucky and New Hampshire. Eric Jones, he breaks through and get, gets a win. He's been running well lately. He ran uh, he ran well here earlier this year. Uh, I think uh, I don't know. I think he finally breaks through. I think this is the week. All right, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But yeah, good picks all around. And uh, before we uh, sign out, uh, some super chats. Let's read some more super chats. Blue Jimmy yeah. 48 fan. I'm ready for Sunday. Hashtag feel the bird. Yep. Tune into the core race uh, this Sunday. Blue Jimmy will be in the main. Yep. He'll be in the main too. So he'll be 36 a, car. Yep. So watch out for Blue Jimmy this week. Yep. He'll be a tough one to race against for sure. Uh, Jason with $5. Thanks, man. Um, they won't make schedule changes on a whim, would they? Um, you have a track employee's. Uh, and you you have, um, you have track employees and local economies and markets to consider. I don't know. Um, going back to the whole you know SMI ISC merger, would you see them changing the schedule really on a whim, like whenever if they were? Uh, I'd say gradually over time. Uh, yeah. But they'd be it would change radically. Like from 2020 to 2030, I think we're gonna see a huge radical change. I'm telling you, Daytona's good by 2030. Daytona is gonna be bookending each end of the season but it's never <laughs> gonna be to where it's like okay it's gonna be like you know a year to year thing would you say i don't i don't think we'll see any mate we might see one race change year to year mm-hmm. especially for the next decade but or so like if this 10, happens. not like 10 races change yeah, i mean you might see like one year like 2021 or 2022 you might see three or four races change i don't think you'll see anything too major and i think anytime they do make a decision you know even though nascar would now be owning the tracks they're still incentivized to do what's best for business. They aren't right. going to like put a race at a time of the year that they think it's going to fail. They're not going to do that. So I don't think they're going <laughs> to intentionally try to screw over any tracks that they now own. Let then, me put it that way. Then why <laughs> why why is Indianapolis on the Fourth of July now? <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna bust, man. I'm sorry. I don't know. I still think it'll be okay. I think Indy, I think it'll help Indy, and I don't think it'll hurt Daytona too bad. All right, we'll have to wait and see, man. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Flying Gator, uh, Storm Fairground Speedway. They can't stop us all. You damn right they can't. <laughs> Send all the Area Fifty One storming <laughs> people to fair to the the soccer stadium. Tear it yeah, down. Tear it Bulldoze down. it. Tear down the soccer stadium. Oh for sure. gosh. Bulldoze it. <laughs> and the final super chat again from Jason. Thank you. Um, who's gonna spin? Stenhouse Jr. Um, who's 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 gonna grin? Eric Jones. Who's gonna win? William Byron. Huh. Okay. Well, that was, I like that. that. that was, I like that. I like that. That's man. creative. That was a good one. Yeah, I like that. That was, that was very good. Very good there. <laughs> so, uh, good on you, man. So, let's see. Uh, any more super chats? Uh, I don't think so. Um, nope. Yeah. So that'll do it for uh, tonight's podcast. Then um, we got on next week, man. Yes, next week we are on Eric Estep's channel. He returns home again. He's not gonna lock yes. himself out this time. Nope. Yeah. And I'll have my Google account. I'll have my set i'll have my internet i'll have everything good and yes. golden so i'm excited yes uh, back to norm, uh, back to normal again for eric Step, um we will be on his channel next week for the nascar weekly podcast and our special guest is a fellow nascar youtuber slash indycar youtuber uh ryan holman he'll be on the first hour and uh well, um, we might have uh, another guest for the second hour so um you'll just have to have to uh, wait and see on that but uh yeah everyone in the chat spamming gen x car we should at least just mention it yeah have you guys seen that kevin Hart paint scheme for this weekend oh that's right yeah. i forgot about that what? it's it it looks kind of cool i haven't really looked at that close so i don't know all the cringy sayings it has on it this time but it the actual better. paint scheme is kind of neat it looks better than the uh the the, the the freaking millennial car it looks way better yeah anything would look better than a millennial yeah car. but then again it's not really a high bar to shoot for there so i understand that uh let's see i'll just have you have you oh, seen geez. it? Jared? Oh, oh, oh Jared's just now seen it. Jared's just now seen it. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> hey, this just means that Bush Beer saw a good return on their uh, millennial car. That's yeah. all this means. And I mean, also, it's sponsors uh, happy, NASCAR's happy. You know what I'm saying? You also have to sell diecast too. Remember that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Diecast, so. Oh, they even have the thing like the old uh, blue cups with the purple mm-hmm. thing through. Oh, I, I had no it. I have okay. Growing up, I'm just gonna go on a tangent here. Growing up, I never understood that thing. I, it was on cups. It was on shirts. It was on everything, and it just like disappeared. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It was some random fad that nobody really knew why it was a fad. You know, it's one of those. I, I don't know, but I like that they put it on there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's absolutely. basically just a, it's, it's basically just an ode to the '90s car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm cool with it. Yeah, I'm I mean, cool I like it. it. It's better than the millennial car, like I just said. Yeah, well, yeah Gen so. X is better than millennials. No, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old school story, bad to say it. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. <laughs> you'll hear problem. You'll hear people being all upset about Gen X. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, you hear more negative things I, about. I can say language. it. Gen Z, we're all Gen Z here. Yep. We can say anything we want about yep. all y'all. We can say whatever the hell we want about it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is funny, but um, that's a good way to end the show. Yeah, that's think, a good way. Yeah, that's uh, just gonna um, that's um about gonna do it for the podcast here tonight guys um i am um let me uh meet you guys really quick oh yeah you're they're muted now they can't hear you guys so y'all can say whatever y'all want now so anyways thank you guys so much for watching this is black flags matter catch you next time cue the outro Black, green flag. Oh, oh, oh.